On this episode of the Empty Netters podcast, we are talking all about the trade deadline and who's going to be on the move. We're talking fighting Rempy. What do we do with this guy? Which team has an actual shot at winning the cup? And of course, we're doing another round of Inside the Locker Room with our boy Bobby Ryan. Check it out. Ice is ready and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. It's deadline week. Feels like Christmas Eve. We're finally back in the studio. I don't know what time it is or what day it is, but I'm psyched to be here. We've been on the road a lot, but we are back right now. And honestly, this was one of my favorite episodes all of last season. Mm. So I'm excited to hear the scorching takes from the boys. I think we get right into it. Let's do it. No Bucky warm up. Some stuff's gone down already, Dan. And maybe we tweeted about it. We might have tweeted about it. (laughs) Uh, big victory for your boy, uh, last, what was that last weekend? I don't even, I get, like I said, yeah, I don't remember where, no, it was, right, mid, it was, it was when we were flying back. mid last yeah, week. Yeah, we leave in Nashville. Yeah. Um, listen, we don't like picking fights around here. We're, we're too kind for that. We're too humble for that. Like I said, but Calgary having a bit of a fire sale, which is really funny because they're on such a heater right now. I know a few teams are going to be doing that this week. I think, yeah, like a few teams that are in the hunt are about to be offloading, but we'll see. Agreed. Go on. Uh, But they're having a bit of a fire sale. Chris Tanev was the first to go. And obviously, as trades come out, people start talking about what the teams are asking. And it was said that a first-round draft pick was the asking price for Chris Tanev. And I think Chris Tanev is a great player. But I tweeted, there is no way that he is worth a first-round pick, which I stand by. Made a little bit of a joke, trying to go a little over the top with it, saying he's worth a fourth. And then people lost their minds. So I was like, listen, I'm obviously joking about the fourth, but he's worth a second-round pick at best. Calgary Flames Twitter got a hold of it, lost their minds a little bit. And listen, I'm not mad at that. It's That's your boy. It's your team. You're passionate. You want to stand up for your guy. You also want to get the best return possible. Um, I doubled down, stuck to my guns, and was like, you're all insane. He's worth a second-round pick. And then I've never been blessed by the hockey gods more than this moment because two hours or so after this, after all this mayhem, I was on a plane. Tweeting at people from a plane. And right as we were landing, boom, he's traded for a second round pick. And I've never felt more validated in my entire life. Good return. Fair return. Fair return. And I think Tanev is a huge boost to the stars. That is a great pickup. Dude, I I love Dallas even more than I did love Dallas after that pickup. So once everyone's fucking calmed down, can't we all just agree that was a great trade by everybody? 100%. I've said, how many times have I said this year, on the Ask Me Anythings, everyone's like, what does Dallas need? I'm like, they need a defensive defenseman to help Miro. Yep. And, I mean, well done, Dallas. Oh. This now just lets Miro be Miro. Yeah, like, this exactly. This is just going to unleash him. Exactly. So I have the, the full return here. So it was a second-round pick in 2024, a conditional third-round pick, and that condition, they get that pick if the Stars make it to the cup final. The cup final, cup not final. conference. And yep. they got Artem, now I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's a tough one. Gershinkov, uh, so it was a former second round pick. So technically, you look at it, it's like two seconds and a conditional third. Yeah, yeah. It's a very fair return. Great. And at the price that they got him at, like the cap hit is insane. I'll totally. Just pull that one Dude, my favorite was the people going, there were a couple of mouth breathers who were like, you said he'd get traded for a second round pick. They got way more than that. Yeah, two seconds and a third and is I, way more than a first. And I'm, like, well, what frustrates yeah. me about that is I'm like, guys, did anyone think that Chris Tanev was going to be traded for just uh, just a pick? Like, it was always going to be more. What we were talking about was what was the highest draft pick he would get in return? Yes, of course. Second. Of course. Of course. What's the cap hit? So he's coming in at 1.125. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's great. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Let's keep moving on with the trades. Yep. The Bushkin. Yep. Back to the Leafs. Bet you hate it, don't you? I fucking hate it. Yeah. Why are we giving up a third? We already are like, like you know, struggling for draft picks and assets. Why the fuck? Sorry. Why? Yeah. Are we let trading? it go, dude. Do it. Why are we trading for Ilya Labushkin? Like, I mean, it sounds like he's got some more moves up his sleeves. Yeah. With, with you know the retention that they put on him, like he's getting. His cap hit comes under league minimum, which whoop de doo great. Yeah. I don't care what his cap hit does. I care what he does on the ice. And first game gets bundled by Rempe. I mean, yeah. not not really his fault. I mean, no, I was yeah. admiring that pass a little bit. <laughs> um, but you just not, yeah, as a Leafs fan, not very happy. Yeah. Uh, nothing burger for me. I, don't, I have nothing to say about this. It's one of those ones that's, 
it's, you know, good for you, Leafs. You, you've got depth on D, I suppose. He's not moving the needle, and I believe there's no way they're done. So, cool. Yep. One of the episodes a while ago, we had made some comment about one of these. Maybe it was even Tanev. <laughs> but we were talking about D guys moving, and I was like, it wasn't Tanev because he matters. But my point was, like, the Leafs last year even, like, grabbed a bunch of defensemen, and everyone was like, see, like, here we go. And I was mm-hmm. like, and not that one pair D grow on trees and are free, but, sure. like, that last year did not help Toronto's D Correct. in the playoffs. And I was like, if you do another thing like that, if you pick up like another depth D, what are we, what are we solving for here? So yeah. that's it. That's all I have to say. Good day. Yeah, good day. Um, three more pieces of news that are big time. Uh, I want to start with Tommy Novak. Signs a nice extension. Yep. I think it's three by three, two, five or three, five, three, by three, five, three, yeah. three by three, five. Um, it's a good number. I I think I love this move. I think Tommy Novak's a phenomenal player. Yeah. I think if you look at the season, the Preds kind of struggled. They're way better since 2024 has started. I think Tommy's been an unbelievable player. And I know a lot of teams were bummed when they saw this. Yeah. There was a lot of teams, Rangers included, Carolina included, that was like, fuck, when he re-signed. So great scoop. I think it's a great move by Trotz. I love that for them. Did you see who... Or did you see they've they've been eight and zero? The Preds are eight and zero since what? Uh, we were there. No, <laughs> since Trotz canceled the, the oh team yeah yeah the yeah. team here to see right. you too. you too right yeah he said it's not a fucking joke boys we suck make the playoffs yeah and, and now they're on an absolute burner. Um, you had a question of why they d- didn't scoop up Kuznetsov. Is that right? Yeah. Like, why? I, I thought for sure when that news came out that he was on waivers, I was like, okay, hey, what team needs a center and. The first team looking like didn't even need to do much digging. It's like Nashville. Yep. Yeah. Who did Kuznetsov win a Stanley Cup with? Trots. Trots. Oh yeah, yeah. true. Like I, I, I thought about too. I thought, and they have so much cap space. Like, but why, why not take a chance on them? Like, I, I think there's a lot, dude. Boston needs one too. I just think the what you just said, why not take a chance? Is that question is that they don't know what's going on with him? Because I, I wouldn't take a chance either. And if he even. Can s- Sorry, finish. Nope. I was just reading because I didn't even know this. He can still, I guess obviously, but he can still be traded. Like they could just trade him now. And maybe there's like a, and you're retaining half of that salary. Like maybe they're interested, but not at fucking seven, eight or whatever. Yeah, he's got a big cap hit. 7.8. Yeah. He's now the highest paid player ever to be rostered in the AHL. Um, kind of an awesome not, stat. Not, yeah, all, all, kind of an awesome stat. I mean, bottom line, obviously, talking about someone coming out of the PA program, we yeah. obviously hope he's you know, doing okay, but that is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then the last two, Lindy Ruff fired. Yes. Um, the season the Devils have had, they started poorly last year. They were chanting fire Lindy in the crowd. They turned it around and had an awesome year yeah. all said and done last year. We always have to say, though, it was like five games. They yeah, started fair, poorly fair. after five games. I, 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 I need people to remember the narrative. is like they weren't that bad for that long. Yeah, a- that's true. I think I do extend it in yeah. my mind. This year, this season is unacceptable. Um, and if you, like we always say, it's the first acts, right? Like it's been unacceptable all year. They haven't really turned it around. But for me, as not a, I'm not a deep, deep Devils fan. I know a lot of our listeners are, and they can speak to this better than me. But for me, as an as a educated outsider, it's the lack of change uh, from Lindy. Like it's like the same banging their head into the wall, the same PP one unit. Luke Hughes at the top there. Like usually when teams are going through it, talented rosters are going through it. You see like crazy line mix ups and all this stuff happening. Mm. I'm sure there's a little bit because I'm not watching the Devils every night, but that's what it feels like from the fan base that I'm hearing. Not enough um, desire, willingness to mix it up and. Where they're at right now, this deep in the season, had to happen. Yeah, it's about time. Uh, this was a long time coming. He was going to get absolutely dumped on with Fire Lindy chance tomorrow, Tuesday night, I think, is their next home game. Against the Panthers. Yeah. If they lose by 50. If this didn't happen. Um, so it had to happen. As we always say, it's the easiest head to chop off, the coach. It's the easy fire. I think he's an older coach. I think he's got a great resume but you look at how young this team is there's a chance that maybe that it is a, a good opportunity to go with someone new and i have something to say about that but while it's not all on lindy agree. and i need fans to understand that it's not all on lindy i agree with you 
there were things that could have been changed that were not. Yes, they had injuries. Yes, their goaltending has been terrible. Their 5v5 scoring has been horrendous, mm-hmm. and not much has been done with that. Uh, their PP1, like you said, it, insane. I think Lindy and this Devils team has been way too soft and way too easy on Luke Hughes. Yeah. I think Luke Hughes is going to be one of the best defensemen in this league in a few years' time, but he is not right now. Mm-hmm. I think he has something like 30, 34 points, something in the low 30s range in points, and he is getting. he's been playing PP1 all season long because of the six letters on the back of his yeah. jersey. Yeah, nice. I and saw I saw that quick. And now. Dougie being out. Yeah. And Dougie being out. And I just think you need more production from him because he's got a lot of brutal turnovers. He's mm-hmm. got a lot of, you know, brain dead plays in the defensive zone where he's leaving his guy and he's not getting the hard slap on the wrist that I think any other rookie with a different name would be getting. And Nemec is a perfect example. I don't think Nemec is getting the same treatment as Hughes is getting. Yeah. So that needs to change as well. And then or that needed to change as well. And then the big one for me is what was that stat that just came out? They've given up the first goal yeah. in games over 70% of the time this season. Ridiculous. That is absurd. Playing from behind, even if it's a f- first five-minute goal, is such a mentality thing in this game. And if you were just doing that every game, part of that is your pregame preparation. And that's on Lindy. So it's not without blame. It's not totally his fault. End of the day, a shakeup is needed. And that one thing I did want to say, when you look at how young this roster is, you look at the types of guys on this Devils team. This is such a good opportunity to do what we've talked about a lot in give a new coach a chance. Yeah. Don't go back to the old boys club carousel. Look elsewhere. Find a new voice. Find possibly a young voice with some new creative ideas and get a new name in the mix here and give them a shot as the head coach of the New Jersey Devils. So do you know the farthest uh, Lindy Ruff has ever made it in his coaching career? I think it's the second round of the playoffs. So it's the Eastern Conference Final. It is the Eastern Conference Final. And he made it to the Cup Final that year. Oh, with who? With Buffalo in 99. That's right. But what has he done since? Diddly squat. Yeah, Yeah. last year. (laughs) And so, yeah, I think it is time for, you know what? You've had a nice coaching career. Go spend some time on the, he's from Alberta. Go spend some time on the farm and pick your feet up and be a dad, be a grandpa. Yeah. It's time to get some new voices yep. in there. Dude. And I agree on to your Luke Hughes point. He's got 31 points in 61 games, yeah. but he's a dash 21 yep. ne- through 60 games. Nemich is a dash 2 through 40 games. I know plus minus is not the most. I'm the biggest plus minus yeah. guy in the world, dude. It is a thing. I can't stand when people, and I know you're not doing that, but. It's a thing when it's astronomical like that. Like yeah. Dash 21. Dash 21? Yeah. Yep. That's brutal. Also, the. Buffalo Sabres have the opportunity to do the funniest thing in the world in hiring Lindy. Yeah. <laughs> like, that would just be awesome. um Too late, I might add, too, for the Devils here. I've seen Kings turn it around, yeah, Oilers turn it around. You know, not everybody, right? Like, the Wild, they don't think, but, like, too late. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the last big one, Elias Pettersson. Petty! Resigns, eight years, uh, 11.6. Six. 100K more than Willie Nylander. We said he was going to get more, yep. as he deserves. Uh, That's a great deal for him. Uh, I th- that's a steal in yeah, my opinion. I really have a couple of things to say about this, and if you'd like to go first, I'd like to offer you no. the table. Uh, I truly, I just think it's an. I didn't. All I was gonna say was I really didn't think it was gonna happen. We had heard from mm. legitimate people, like legitimate people. I'm not gonna say names, but that they were like, he wants out. He's the the Lindholm thing was part of because Petey's gone. All yeah. this stuff, and and maybe those were true in the moment. Maybe yeah. he said that, but I was very much gearing up for. Bye, Petey bye, being Petey. gone, and this so this was a big surprise. I thought it was a great. It's great for the Canucks moving forward because he's a fantastic player if he's happy. And I thought that was a bargain. Yeah, kid. Uh, and that was definitely true, right? Because we heard about this Carolina trade that r- came really close. So I think it was true that something wasn't perfect. He mm-hmm. was looking elsewhere. Totally agree. It's a. Uh, I don't want to say bargain because he's getting paid over eleven and a half million dollars, yeah. but he could have definitely got more. I think he definitely left some money on the table. Yeah, I'm happy for him. He deserves every cent of that. I think he is being a little friendly to the team here while also getting his bag. Yep. I was always surprised, and I'm glad he's back. Yeah. Because and it's funny, you know, deep down being a Bruins fan. It's funny to say anything nice about the Canucks because that 2011 final series was so insane. I mean, it's uh, the Sedin brothers were such 
fuckers and yeah. you know you had you had Rome being such a prick and and Burroughs Burrow. biting Bergeron's fighting finger. people did. This is going to be an off-season topic between us cuz I was a huge Canucks fan at that time yeah. like, at game 5. Oh my god. I, that's where my Bruins hatred started. Yeah. And two years later, when I decided, oh, I'm going to become a Leafs fan. That then that game seven. Yeah. So wow. this will be. We'll just off season this, dude. Become Yo. become a Panthers fan right but, now, fuck please. Off. <laughs> but uh, I um, I really love. I really love this Canucks team, and I think it's, I think it's because of a few things. Um, we talked last season about how they're so good on paper. Yeah. And I was like, be good. And the fact that they're good, I, I love that the potential realized yeah. is really fun. And then I just love their players. We all know I'm a big Quinn Hughes guy. I love Quinner. I love Hronick. I love JT Miller. I love Brock Besser. And I I love Petey, too. I love the way Petey plays. Uh, so I always just thought it was so weird how he possibly wanted out. Why would you ever want to leave that group of people? Yeah. And Talk is the man. So I was always so confused. So I'm happy he's back. I am sad we didn't see the chaos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it doesn't exist anymore. Drama and I love chaos. And it was fun all yep. season long so far. Being like Elias Patterson is fucking leaving this. Team. Yeah, that was really fun. So I'm bummed that that didn't happen. But I am happy for Vancouver and I'm happy for PD. So that's amazing. Okay, let's put those buckets on and get into hot ice, which for this episode is literally. Just what we think is going to happen at the trade deadline this week. Just this episode's going to come out on Wednesday. We're talking on Monday. Nothing huge has happened today. Mm -hmm. So we're making predictions for the next four days, and you'll hear it. Um, I wrote a ton of shit down. Anything you want to talk no, in just, particular? Just, I love it. Just be be my Sherpa here and just begin people, and then we will, we will start talking. About okay, it. I actually want to start with Noah Hannafin. Uh, okay, my my only things on Noah Hannafin, I think Noah Hannafin's going to the Lightning. I think the Lightning, every year, they figure something out. They make an unbelievable move. I think Noah Hannafin wants or would be very happy in Tampa. I think it's a perfect spot for him. How good has Tampa been at nurturing and bringing up unbelievable defensemen? I think the opportunity to play with guys like Hedman and Sergachev is very enticing to him. Um, I think what's interesting will be going back the other way. It's obviously going to be a first round pick. Uh the from the, 2026. Yes, the Lightning don't have many first round picks. Uh I don't really know what of their prospects off the top of my head yeah. is, is that great for them going back. So it's going to if it's a 2026 first rounder, there's probably going to be a 2024 second rounder involved. There's probably going to be some type of roster of with term rostered player, I would guess, but I think that's a very serious option for him. I know Boston is another option for him, but I've said, like we've said from the beginning of the year, Boston trading a first-round pick and being without a first-round pick yet again for Noah Hannafin is, in my opinion, not a good move. Yep. Is having Charlie McAvoy, Hampus Lindholm, and Noah Hannafin on, in your decor great? Yes, it is great. But I'm not sure that Noah Hannafin and the deal he's going to get i think where noah goes it will come with an extension okay yep and i don't think i i just don't i don't think it is a good move for boston i don't think so i think it, like i know that's what the flames want and that's what he wants i like no one has the cap and the assets to properly make that work with a, an extension built in. boston does do you think they have boston has roughly 27 million cap next summer but to make it happen at this deadline. Oh yeah, they they Boston making that trade. What does Noah make? Like four, it's eight, five. Oh, it's eight. yeah. Find that out. But n I think Boston would be a situation where it's it would have to include picks to sweeten it. What is it? So four point nine. Okay, four so nine. I guess yeah. You, what I say? Four eight. A three. Yeah. You'd be bringing a three. Three part third party team probably get that to like yeah one five. But also seven. if if you give enough back. True. For example, if Boston were to do that trade, I think it would be something like a Grizzlick, which is 3-8 right there. Boom. And then retain 20%, and then here's a pick, here's a prospect. Like, that's how you make it work. Yeah. Because what, what's it to Calgary retaining 20 to, to 40% for yeah. the last two months of the season? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Again, I don't like it for Boston. I, I Honestly, the number one reason I don't like it is because 
I don't fucking want Don Sweeney to get Noah Hannafin because Noah Hannafin is the reason that yeah. 2015 <laughs> draft went to shit because Don kept trying to trade up to get him and then botched his entire draft. And I don't yep. want him to be able to be like, I finally got him. It, it, dude, and I don't think Noah Hannafin has lived up to where he went and where Don wanted him I anyway. I agree. So I don't, I don't like him in Boston. I don't think... the I, Noah Hannafin is a great piece on a team that is missing a Noah Hannafin to mm -hmm. try to get you to the cup. I don't think Boston is a Noah Hannafin away from the cup. I, agree. I do think what we were just talking about with, with Greg Wyshynski, there's that template and Tampa has... has figured that out and made the right moves on D to have that solid core. I think Noah Hannafin is a great move for, for Tampa, mm -hmm. and especially because we don't know about Sergey if he's going to be able to play yeah. at all. Um, and I think he does go. And, by the way, I think a 26 first-rounder from Tampa is actually good because they are going to be, like, you know, who knows? Maybe they retool on the fly, but, like, I'd love a 2026 first from Tampa much more than I'd love one next year. Yeah, I agree. So I'd, I'd ask for the 2028 first rounder, dude. <laughs> like, go into the fucking free fall, baby. I like so it. I'm Noah Hannafin to the Lightning, done. Love it. Happening. Next. Let's go to the Penguins. They've got two guys, right? Two guys, in my opinion. Okay, Jake Gensel. I think Jake Gensel's moving. I, I don't think so. I, I and I, I, I like yeah. that. Honestly, I, I like it. Why? Um, I just think Sid's going to walk into Kyle Dubas' office and say, you're not trading Jake. We're going to try and make the playoffs. If we don't make it, we don't make it. Yep, which I I I I hear that and if if I'm Kyle Dubas and I have a single piece of peach fuzz on my shriveled up bean bag, I go, dude, get fucked. Like I know you're Sid, but yep. We went out and we got Carlson for you. We went out and brought your boys back and look at that. We're not making playoffs. And you can games in hand me all you want, Pittsburgh. You're not making playoffs. I really I really think they're done. So I think that's why they're going to do it. Uh, I think it's been interesting to hear that they say they don't want picks. They want yeah. prospects, which I, in my opinion, opens the door to a lot of teams. And here's one that I don't know how they'd make the money work, but holy shit, if the New York Rangers could get Jake Gensel, because I think about prospects, dude. Yep. I think about Gabe Perot. I think about a lot of players that they have in the system that they could send, you know, three guys that way. And you put Jake Gensel up on that first line with Mika Zibanejad and get him going 5v5 for the first time all season. Mm -hmm. That would legitimately punch their ticket to the Stanley Cup and probably lift it as well. Wow. I said last week I'm finally willing to admit the Penguins are probably not making it. Yeah. Um, even though I still think Philly is catchable. Oh, yeah. And like someone's going to either Jersey or Pitt or like that is a dumpster of that three spot so I, I still think they could miss and i love i think um blake is right that is what sid is saying i just think dubis is gonna go I, okay i don't care but with the caveat of i just think and we've heard this from every source that the asking price is huge i think the gensel asking price is huge so he's going to say to sid i respect you but if i can get this i'm doing it mm. and i don't think he'll cave i think if he doesn't come in at the asking price they want which is absurd then i think he will stay but if someone goes fucking nuts I think they do it, and I love um, Carolina. I think they missed on PD. Yeah. They feel a fucking huge pe scoring piece away, and I think they th – that's my call. Gen they pay a king's ransom for Jake Gensel to try to win the fucking cup finally. I also think Florida for that reason. Ooh, that would be crazy. I really like yep. – I really – and and Florida to me seems like the um, – they make the trade with talking to Jake of them going, we're bringing you back. Yep. But that would be very interesting because they've got Forsling, they've got Montour, they've got Reinhardt, they've got a lot of people yeah. to sign. If you add Jake Gensel to that group, that'd yeah. be complicated. Yep. But, but there's going to be a big change there anyway. I, so. I tweeted today, if you replace, if the Panthers can upgrade Nick Cousins in their top six, they have the best top six in the NHL by a billion years. Yeah. And if they added Jake Gensel, I'm like, oh, you're, I mean... I'll see you in the cup. Yep. You know, you want to break up the rat line, the Kachuk, <laughs> Bennett, I, I think cousin. they, I, I, I think they do too. Yeah. Like, no, I think no. they are like, yeah, wrong. please. <laughs> um, the other one for me is Riley Smith. Oh, and, and well, the other one for me is Riley Smith. Yep. And to our earlier points, I think if Gensel doesn't go, like if the asking price never gets there and Gensel doesn't go, they probably don't trade Riley Smith either. Cause mm -hmm. they're like, all oh, right, dude, like we're fucking, like, cause I don't think he'll keep Gensel to play Kate Sid, but then also Jack Riley, not that he's been that great, but I just think they're either in it or they're or they're trading. People. I think I think Riley Smith goes no matter what. Okay. Uh, it, it, if they find a suitor, my issue with Riley is he's got a five million dollar cap hit. I think, and he's that's under contract next year too. Yep. And I think Riley Smith's a great player. It just clearly hasn't worked in Pittsburgh. Me too. So that's a hard sell to be like, hey, take this five million on. He's been really bad this year, uh, and, well, he's, I, and he's thirty two. I think the argument is 
it's you guys are doing something wrong. Oh, great. Yeah, he's like, I, but, he'll work but for me. Again, if, if I'm the buyer, I go like this, oh, Riley Smith can't play with Sidney Crosby. You know what I yeah. mean? There's yeah, just yeah, a yeah. lot of ammunition to be like, I'm not doing that. Yep. Um, uh, who's next? I, well, I, I just want to say, I think he goes, and you know who I love for him? Because they've been looking for a winger, but I don't think they have the money to do something huge. Mm. Uh, the Canucks. I think the Canucks, I think he bolsters a Canucks playoff run, a proven winner in the playoffs, playoff performer. And they're like, God, we just need one winger that might have a spark. I'm I'm making a call to Pittsburgh if they're moving Riley yeah. Smith. It's a smart move. Yeah, I, I, like, be I like Colorado a lot for Riley. Uh, but I think they need more of a center. Yep. So Okay, uh, Boston Bruins. Uh, I don't and, want... and, and save any Allmark talk because I'm going to get, the goalies will be the last thing we discuss. Okay, then I have nothing to say. Okay, all I'll say is this fucking trade every ufa on the team literally every single one of them the panthers have already passed yeah. the bruins they're not going to get the bruins will not catch them the leafs are going to pass the bruins the bruins are going to finish third and lose to toronto in the first round the bruins are absolutely dick slapping the leafs right now do you want to change that yeah. take no yeah. okay <laughs> i do not and the only way the bruins could possibly beat the leafs in the first round is because the leafs yeah exactly the leafs are just like yeah. they see the spoke being fucking and like, oh no. jesus yeah. christ <laughs> matthews can never score again but the the just there's just no need and and actually i said to you earlier um the the bruins good start this year is the reason some of the young prospects weren't getting more burn but i but i think the cost of the it. benefit of that is you can maybe move guys like yeah. jvr because you're like hey he he had a pretty good run for us at the beginning. Like maybe yeah. he helps you. Helps your power play. Yep. Get him. Get no. Him out. Yeah. I I I don't want to get into it because I've got into it with Bruins Twitter a ton. But it's like there's a difference between being sellers when you're in such a good position and making smart moves. Yep. Trading away your prospects and first round picks for a like a Tarasenko. Yeah. That's not winning you the cup this yep. year, guys. So just calm down and be smart. Okay. This one, um, we don't have to linger on it, but I just want your thoughts. I'm seeing that the Caps are unloading they are. again. They're doing it again. And it was just hilarious to me because it's like two years in a row where you're like, I think they might make it. And they're like, and we're out. Well, I actually like, I think it's Me too, it's them. genius. Because you know what they're doing? Obviously they miss playoffs, but they're assessing what, we, we can't make a move that all of a sudden we're making, look at the good teams and the, the, it's course. smart. Yep. They're doing a great job. The the only tricky part for them is what's tricky for Pitt is that you've got this legacy goat and yeah, you're like, just, ah, how do we handle this? So it's kind of messy. But Max Pacioretty, I think, I think could and and possibly will move. Yeah, it's up to Max. Max yep. is only the second player in Washington Capitals history to sign a full move, no move clause, which Him I think Obi. is amazing. Um, it uh, like a lot of respect to the Caps for yeah, getting, uh, you know, dude, like a totally season that like him. Patches went all around the world. People don't know this to to get his ACL fixed. Like he he yeah, yeah. cared so much about coming back. He has come oh, back. He's Achilles. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Achilles. He has come back and has played very well. Um, I know I just said this about them. Uh, I think Boston is a team that he would wave it for. Yeah. I think Boston is a team that they could go, here's a second, third round pick. And that's what I'm talking about, guys. That is a smart, yep. calculated move that's not too costly that could go, here you go, guys. Here's a pick. We're going to take him. We're going to throw him on that second line wing and see what can happen. That would be interesting. I think I'd love to see him move. It's going to be to a, uh, honestly, it's going to be to a, a uh, uh, Florida, New York, Boston. I think he's going to stay on the East Coast, and I think it's going to be a. I'm only going to a team that I could legitimately see winning a cup. Yeah. So to me, on the East, it's New York and Florida. And but everyone's. I've, I keep reading that geography is super important to his family. Yes, is it that is. like Northeast area geography, or does he just mean East Coast? Does anybody know what he's talking about there? I don't know. And, and part of me wonders, like, I wonder if Carolina. I wonder if he could go back. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, you know. It's, so he's a, he's from Connecticut. That's where he's. I from. think it's northeast. Think that's why I said northeast that. Yes. Area, yeah. That's why I like the rags because it's like. Yeah, and I like yeah. Boston too. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm telling you, it's not going to be that costly. And Rangers, you're so worried about giving up player. Like you don't want to say goodbye to some of your guys. That could be a pretty good option of a guy that you're not, you know, giving up too much for. Yep. Okay. Next, Ottawa Senators. A lot of guys that could move. A lot of guys that I don't think necessarily want or wanted yes, to move. Agree. Um, I think. Did I? Cut no, you go, okay. go. I, 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 super quick. I think Claude keeps getting brought up. I think Vlad keeps getting brought up. I don't think either want to move. And I would frankly love them to stay. I Me too. I think they're both great leaders. I think it'd be good. I believe in the Ottawa Senators. I, it's been an awful year, but awful year. whatever. The one to me that is a, you got to move him is Chikrin. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't worked, and you you have Chabby, you have yep. Sanderson in front. Uh, like, too many of the same guys. It's, it's too many of the same guys. Their cap combined, I think, is something like 20 <laughs> mil. It's a quarter of the cap space. You can't do that. Move him. No question. Where do you like him? Um, I actually don't really, uh, it's funny cause all the teams I think about that need D they need the opposite of type him. of D. Yeah. 
Um, I personally, the tires were kicked on it. I'd love to see him in LA. Yep. I think that that could be a very interesting landing spot for him. I like that actually. Um, it could be an off season thing because Roy is yes. in UFA. He's going to get a payday. They have, uh, Ch- uh, Clark and Spence on the right side, young and, guys coming up and cube needs to be resigned. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Uh, yep. to me, uh, yeah, uh, that's the, you know, I, I just think he needs to be moved. Um, that's an interesting option for me. Who needs a puck moving defenseman? Yeah, that's um, in the playoffs right yeah. now. Um, He's not cheap either. Yeah, uh, let's think about that more. Uh, I want to say this: I I really hate that the Senators had this season because I thought they brought in some cool players and I was excited to see yeah. this develop. And if they blow it up now or even like a partially blow it up, that sucks. Giroux, <clears throat> Giroux, I believe stays, even though that uh, teams could totally use him, and I would love to see him get a chance for a cup. Truly, but I believe he stays. Bad Vlad, unfortunately. I do think goes, and I'm looking right at Vegas. Um, mm. They're going to do some manipulation with the cap yeah. and the long term yeah. IR, and good for them, dude. That's how you fucking win. Yeah. And um, I like that one too. He would be fucking valuable as shit. That team is so deep already. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Jack Eichel dish and Bad Vlad the puck? Fucking like that's, hell, dude. That's beautiful. I love that. Okay, love that. Um, next, let's go Rangers. It's you know every person that's mentioned. The Rangers fans jump on it and yep. say that they want them. Um, it's Frank Petrano and Adam Henrique. Yep. Are the ones that and, uh, and Vlad. People are talking um, Vlad yep, going back people there. People talking Vlad yeah. too. Um, I think Frank and Henrique is a big one. I also think uh, Alex Wenberg. Mm. Alex Wenberg was mentioned today. He has been held out of the Kraken's uh, situations because for trade purposes. So he's. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't heard it yet. Yeah. So Wenberg is moving. I don't love Wenberg to the the Rangers. Thank you. Um, I, I think I it's don't a, love him as a player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's an absolutely insane thing. He's possibly the biggest man rocket in the NHL. Yeah. Um, and I think he's a I think he's a good situation for teams. Colorado is one that I mentioned. Yes. I could yes. see Colorado getting Wenberg because that's a great roster of guys that you put Wenberg coming up down the middle playing second or third line center. He's going to do well mm-hmm. with those players. I really don't like him for the Rangers. The Rangers for me, they want for Toronto. They want Vlad. The The fact of the matter is what New York needs is a... Chikrin. <laughs> yeah. I think New York needs a top six forward. Yep. And that is going to cost them a first round pick. And we just don't know mm-hmm. if Drury's going to be able to do that. I yeah, think it's so crazy. fucking... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. I think it's insane. Um, if they got Henrik and Vitrano, um, I really like that for them. Yep. I think that that's just great. I think both players are playing incredibly well. I think Vitrano, this is something that I had a conversation with you about. If I were Vitrano and if I were Verbeek, I wouldn't want to move. I think he is their power play guy. I think he's going to have 35 goals this year. He's getting the minutes and the opportunities that he will not get on New York. So you can't expect the same production, I don't think. And when I look at that young roster, Frank's only 29. He was their all-star. I think he has a lot of upside staying with this team and staying with them. But I understand if you're the Ducks and you're still in this rebuild, you might want to move him and get what you can. But what can you get? If you're doing that, Rangers fans, man, like there there are people <laughs> there are people on fucking Twitter being like, they want Kako back over my dead body. And people's ex- ex- explanation is, Frank Vertrano's 29 and he's about to score 35 goals. Kako's only 22. How do you make that trade? And I'm like, guys, there is no guarantee that Kako will ever be better than this. Yeah. Kako is a third line player. Frank Vertrano is a top six player. Yep. That is just the facts. Yep. So I think it's crazy how Rangers fans want the cup this year and they want to make a move for some big stud, but they won't give up Capo Kako. Dude. It's like, guys, I, you got to do it. You got to take the, him. Dude, the Bruins let go of fucking Blake Wheeler to win a cup. It's yep. obviously not guaranteed, but you got to try. Mm-hmm. So it's like, this is the best you've been in a long time. They look so fucking good. You got to be willing to let go. You got to be willing to let go of more than Kako, frankly. Yep. So, oh my God, yeah, yes, it's crazy. Yep, I think it's um, Frank. I think Frank's going to New York. You think you do think so? Yeah, I think Frank stays. Um, if you're the Ducks, his value's never been higher. So I totally get that. I just think, and and I will say, admittedly, Frank has multiple times talked about how much he loved playing in New York with yeah. Crides and Mika, and and like his t- just being in the city. So certainly, there's desire there. But dude, you're in Southern California, and he's on a on a fun team and having the fucking season of his life like to you, what you said earlier i totally resonates with me yeah. i just don't know that you you want to give that up now if he feels like the ducks are he would never say this out loud but if he feels like the ducks are several years away from competing yeah. then yeah 
he he wants out. Go. Um, but if I'm him and I'm Verbeek, I'm like, dude, no. I'm. Uh, I agree. You're I, part of this team. You're I, our I best really, goal scorer. I really would not want to move if I were Frank, and if I were Verbeek, I wouldn't move it. Because yeah. like I said, if you're, even if, let's say it's straight up, if you do Frank for Kako, Kako and, a and a first, I go, what is this first, 28 to 32? Yep. I don't fucking need that right now. And like, and, you, and, you get Kako, and, and even on... Anaheim, cuck, it's probably a third line. He's the worst of the. You now you have like a bunch of twenty-two year olds, and he's the fucking worst one of them. Yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, thanks, dude. Now get in line deal. behind fucking. I really would not Mc, do that. McT and and Z and and yeah. Troy and everybody, and I'm like, what are you doing? You're here? given a, a you're given a thirty-five goal score, and I'm projecting up. He's but, already at twenty-nine. He's gonna score yeah. more than that. Yeah, he's got you're, twenty-one you're games. Giving a thirty-plus goal score for a guy who's never sniffed thirty points in his career. Goalies, yep. chaotic market. Um, I have a ton I want to talk about. I want to go first on go. this one. At the beginning go, baby, of go. beginning of the season, loyal listeners will remember that one of our preseason predictions was we each said three goalies were going to be traded mm. this year. You said Hellebuck, Gibson, and uh, Carter Hart. <laughs> hey, I'll give you that was not fair. So two, you only submitted two. Hellebuck obviously not. Gibson maybe still. I said Logan Thompson, Olmark, and Soros, and was laughed out of this fucking studio when I said Soros. And now, dude. He's the number one fucking, him and Markstrom are like the hottest goalie names being talked about. And in the fucking twists of all twists, I think I'm actually going to walk my prediction back. Because mm. even though I think, and Bobby Ryan says this, the, the they should do it. Because they're not going any further than the first round. Great. No matter what, even on this fucking heater they're on. Yep. But I just don't know that they have the sack to the fan base when they're doing what they're doing right now. To be like, and pull plug Star I think Trotz does. I hope he does. I, I hope mean, he does too. Look, they have us Askarov, eleventh overall, twenty twenty first round yeah. pick, sitting in the minors, his second year in the minors. This year he's got played thirty games, two point one four goals against average, and a nine twenty save percentage, and that's an improvement on his year prior in the in the AHL. Like, what are we waiting for, well, dude? Yeah, go. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be pretty concise with this. Um, I think Jake Allen is going to get traded. Me too. Um. That one is an interesting one because I'm not like I don't really know what that does. I think it gives you a little bit of depth. I think Flurry has said he doesn't want to move, but if the Wild in this week look like we're done, we're out. Yep, th- he has not missed the playoffs. I think in 17 seasons. Yeah, and he and he really cares about that. Mark Andre Flurry has yep. not missed the playoffs in 17 Sick. seasons. I still don't think he's. Gonna I don't move. think so either. But I do think that there's a world, and I'm gonna go back to Detroit. If he if he says he's a, uh, he's okay with being moved, I think Detroit is a very real option. Yep. For him. But the big three are Olmark, Soros, and Markstrom. Yep. No doubt about it. All all three have to move. Yes, whether dude. it be whether it be now, Come on. hold on. Whether it be now or this summer, all three have to move. Yep. It's just the it's the fact of the matter. I can't believe the meltdown that Calgary has done with this. Oh, dude, it's a this disaster. poor guy's name has been in this carousel for fucking months. I've eaten multiple hot wings because of talking <laughs> about trading this fucking guy. You have to send him for respect out of him because after all this, you can't bring him back and make him play for you next year. Yeah. You can't. You simply cannot. Um, Soros. Uh, you trade you said him. it all. I agree. Trade him. Bobby is right. You you you're not. What do you do if you keep him? You go on this run. You go. We, we made it into the playoffs. You're going to lose in the first or second round. Yep. Was that worth it? Was that worse? The the picks like the worst first round pick that you probably yep. have. What it is doing, however, is saying to your fan base, we can't win, guys. And I think that's okay. But you can't. And the fans that you're going to upset by saying that. Sorry, dude. Yep. Like, be realistic. They'll be back in a month. I know. They just look at the Panthers last year. The Panthers last year were a nightmare for GMs because of this. I said all season long that uh, the Bruins' identity is their goaltending. Yep. We're long in the tooth now in the season. The Bruins, I think since 2024, are like straight up without the uh, uh, overtime shootout point. They are a flat 500 team. Yeah. it's So I I, I think that's breaking down a little bit. Yeah. Olmark has to be traded. Yep. Whether it be now or the summer, like I said with the other two. If the deal is there, you do it. He's going, dude. If it's whatever, you don't do it. You trade him this summer. In my opinion, we are now in a Mexican standoff with these three teams because the first one is going to dictate a set, lot. That's the market. And I think the best return comes now because teams are desperate. Teams are willing to bit, do a big mix-up right now when Especially you don't for have, this position, in my opinion. don't have as much time to think about it, and I think the Bruins should do it. 
And the big one for me, regardless of the fact that the Devils are dead, I think Linus Ulmark, a, a Matt Grizzlick, or a Jake DeBrusque, Fabian Lysel, one of their top prospects. Yeah, who I love. And a second round pick to New Jersey for Tyler Toffoli and Dawson Mercer is a sign, seal, deliver trade that is good for both teams. Because Devils, you get Olmark for the rest of this year, whatever. You get him next year, controlled, and the chance to re-sign him and have your goalie with Jack Hughes in this core for the next five years. And Linus Olmark is a phenomenal goalie. Yep. You also get Fabian Lysel, one of the top prospects in the Bruins organization who's playing at a point per game in the AHL right now. You also get a second-round pick. The Bruins get a great, great, great sniper top six winger for this playoff run in Tyler Toffoli, and you get your center who's having a down year in Dawson Mercer for the future that yep. you desperately need. Yep. I think it's an even trade for both teams. I think it answers a lot of questions for both teams, and it's something that I would pull the trigger on right now if I were both teams. The only teams that are going to acquire a goalie in the next five days are playoff teams, obviously. Yes, uh, but I do think the Devils, again... If, oh, oh, sorry, fair. Yeah. Uh, in the hunt, significantly okay, in the hunt sorry, playoff yeah, yeah. teams. No, extremely fair. How many of those teams do you think exist? How many teams do you think will could even acquire a goalie this week? Like three? I think it's three. three Devils? Kings? Kings. Yep. Canes. Because I think you cannot roll into the playoffs. If you're the Hurricanes, you cannot roll into the situation. Devils, the Kings, right Canes, um, Leafs, and Wings are the, are the Leafs. No, I five not, teams that I think. I do could. not. I do not think either the Leafs or Wings are going to make the move for a starter. Me, me neither. So, so I think it's Kings. I think it's Canes, and I think it's Devils. Kings, Canes, Devils, and you don't think Leafs? You don't think Leafs or Wings would do a starter? I would not. I yeah, and not. I also I, I didn't even name the Oilers, who I really don't think are going to do something. No, no, but no, they they're should not. They're, for they're, a backup. Yeah. Um, I love, I, Elmark's going, dude, for 100%. Yep. Do you think if one of the three Mexican standoff goalies go, no one else, like, do you think only one, like the Devils are going to get one of those three and then no one else is going to make that huge move? No, I think if, I think one, one deadline acquisition will happen. If the, uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> I would love it. I would love those three teams to get these three goalies that we're Because I think about. this, Olmark to the Devils. You know who I think would? I'm sorry to interrupt you. you know who I think would look amazing in a Kings jersey is Saros. Oh yeah. Oh my they've god. They've been trying to get him. I know they have since the draft. All Mark to the Devils. Markstrom to the Canes. I love because that changes their team in such a massive way. He's been the best goal in the fucking well. league. And then Flurry, I think moves. I think he cares about the playoffs enough in the Wild. They're he does dead. too. I love the Kings for Flurry because he, it's not the like it's it's not the it's your net, but it's also not you'll never play. Because he doesn't want to go <clears throat> yeah. to the Leafs where they're like, dude, you're never going to play. You know, I think it would behoove the Kings to understand that this is an important year for them. Like they, Me they should be making moves right now to go far. Yeah, not, like, not, not. Who knows if Doughty and Kopitar is going to keep this form? Not to mention, dude, the uh, Knights are losing to the Blue Jackets right now, and they're devastated with injury. The Kings could absolutely hop the Knights in the sand. Yeah, yeah. So. And then um, I also don't hate Flurry to the Wings yeah, for the same reason because like that would be really cool. Yeah. The question is, I really think Allen is going, and like where does he? You know, yeah, if, I think it's just a depth one. Like yeah. that could be the Canes. The same, same. Uh, yeah, but I the Canes just need if they get a depth goalie, I don't think they move the needle for me. Like they need to go get Soros or Allmark or Markstrom. Yeah, and like I don't think they're gonna trade Allmark to the Canes. Yeah. So it's like go get Soros or Markstrom. Yeah. Right. I envision like a three way trade. Like the Kings get like Soros, and then the Preds get picks and prospects from two different teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that third team is also getting some piece that they've been desiring. Yeah, I just think it's so hard. But you're right; everyone's so desperate right now. But it's so hard with the cap. Everyone is just everyone's oh, cap in cap hell. Yep. I don't know. It'll you be can, weird. You can figure it out, though. Yeah. All right. Stay on. Stay on X. Yeah. Stay on X this week, boys and girls. All right. We're going to kick it to our session with Bobby Ryan down in Nashville. Always love when the homie comes on. We talk a lot about this trade deadline. Hope you enjoy it. Guys, I'm taking a quick time out from the podcast to talk to you about my favorite canned cocktail that is ready to drink, and that is June Shine. It's not even close. Honestly, I first found out about June Shine because of their unbelievable kombuchas. I'm a big kombucha guy these days, and they have a hard kombucha that knocks your socks off. But right now, all of their canned cocktails are using the best quality spirits with real fruit and ingredients that you can actually pronounce. So you know you're not putting a bunch of junk in your body. Their margarita, which tastes off the charts, has 12% ABV. Unbelievable. Their other cocktails have 8%, so you're getting about one and a half to two shots per drinks. No mess, no fuss. You don't have to worry about making stuff. You can have barbecues with this. You can watch the game with this. You can take it to a tailgate. 
no matter what, Juneshine is ready to go, and they have, like I said, the best taste and the best ingredients. My least favorite thing about a lot of these canned cocktails is you drink them, you get that chalky taste, it tastes too sugary, it feels like you've got craziness going into your body. These things are delicious. Tastes like a bartender made it right there for you on the spot. They're ready to go. They're unbelievable. Also, Juneshine cares about the planet. Their factory that everything is brewed in, 100% sustainable energy power on that bad boy. You love to see that. So go find some of your favorite canned cocktails, Juneshine, in a ton of locations, Ralph's, Vaughn's, Kroger's, Target, Whole Foods, all these different places. Also go to juneshine.com so you can find out where to snag their margaritas today. Change the game and change your favorite canned cocktail by getting on board with Juneshine right now. Okay, we are here in Nashville, back again with our very good buddy, Bobby Ryan. Bobby, thanks for joining us. You got a lot going on. I appreciate you making the time out of the day. <laughs> yeah, I, was, you know, I, I was able to rearrange some things, and you guys look pretty good for first morning in Nashville. Yeah, so. right? right? Yeah. We, uh, we, we, as it always goes in Nashville, you burn it a little bit later than you mean to yes. every yeah. night. You know, yeah. I'm like, we're going to take it easy yeah. tonight. I've never. Did you guys it's see my jersey on the walls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the saying, right? In Nashville, yep. you, you mess around too late on Broadway, you wake up in Alabama. So you guys are here. Good job. That's a win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I and woke up in Tennessee, yeah. so that's good. Good. Yep. Yeah, you guys got some sleep, so it's good. That's a yeah. big win. Um, the first thing we have to talk about, specifically you and I, last time you joined us, we called the Rangers frauds, yeah. and then they ripped off 10 straight, and I've been hearing about it in the comments. So, right. so I think they owe us a thank you, honestly, though. We'll yeah. Give them a little kick in the ass that they needed. We turned them into a yes, wagon. Yes, exactly. Like, there's no question yeah. about it. Yeah. They saw that, got motivated, yep. ripped off a franchise record 10 straight wins. And here's the crazy thing. Beautiful. I still don't believe in them. <laughs> that was a really impressive run, <laughs> but I still don't fully believe. Man, I took a beating on uh, whatever it is now, X or Twitter. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. Um, and I was like, somebody said, made a comment that just said basically, why are we listening to him if he was never good enough to play for the blue, <laughs> the blue the shirt, blue, yeah, blue yeah, shirts? Yeah. And I was like. I, I think you are overestimating how much I care. I was just yeah. asked the question and I answered the yeah. question. Yeah, and, right. And he's like, you're just doing it for clicks. I'm like, it's not my podcast, yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm like, I was a guest. Yeah, so. dude, I, I, I hopped on X too because what we said, I don't think people understand the definition of fraud. And, and I very, very cleanly explained. I was like, they are a very good team mm -hmm. who in December and January played 500 hockey. Yeah. That is fraudulent hockey for such a good team. And a ton of Rangers fans were like, this actually makes a ton of sense. Nope. And, and oh, I was they like, were with you. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I was like, thank you. Because I was just trying to explain, we weren't saying that they're a shitty team. We're saying they might not be as good as they are if they're playing like that. And they've turned it around. So it's yep. great to see. Um, another 10-gamer going in the opposite direction, Connor McDavid hasn't scored in 10 games. Yeah. Thoughts? Worried? No. <laughs> Didn't he have 28 assists? He sucks now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> He's doing just fine. Yeah. Um, He's just going through the lull. It's this is like you're in the dog days now, right? Where yeah. your game's what fifty to seventy. Um, you start to th see things take shape, and the and the elite teams kind of become the elite teams. Like yeah. I don't think there's going to be a lot more movement, especially in the East. I think Jersey mm -hmm. has a chance um, if they pull the trigger and get a goaltender. But uh, outside of that, like the teams are just starting to separate. He's going through it right now, but he's putting up two points a game still. Yeah, like, right. And and they're winning, right? I think they're do they, are they right there now? Yeah, they, yeah. They, so they had they went on a crazy heater, right? Yeah. What was that, 16? 16, yeah. yeah. They had just, they won last night, I think. They had yep. lost, yep. they beat the yep. Kings, actually. It was a big yep. win last yep. night. Yep. They had lost three in a row before that, but they're like they're right there. solidly yeah. in the Pacific. Yeah, yeah they're know. sitting comfortably in third yep. in the Pacific. Yep. And, and, and like a two points behind Vegas or something, you know, yeah. like they're right Dude, there. Dude, the, the juxtaposition of Connor and Austin cracks me up. Oh, yeah. like Austin is like, I don't need to pass. I'm just going to yeah. score every time I shoot. And Connor's like, I'm just going to pass the puck and we're going to get points and get wins because that's all that matters. To yeah. Me. And, and I don't know anything about their mentalities, but just looking at it on the stat sheet, it's, it's funny how different mm -hmm. they are playing right now. Yeah, they couldn't. Yeah. I, he's going to work himself. Oh, I should argue if you have a 70 goal season, you're going to be in the heart yeah. of the yeah. conversation. But it's like they're just so d different dynamics of players that like I never worry about either one of them when they don't score for a few games yeah. or when they don't put up points for a few games. Yeah, like they're, completely too, agree. they're too elite not to. And the guys around them are too mm -hmm. elite when yeah. you look at it. So it's like Conrad hasn't scored in 10 games, but Whatever. 21 points, the team's winning games, yeah. and maybe saving it for the playoffs. Which is what yeah. he cares yeah. about. Which yeah, scares you. Yeah, yeah right. We, we always joke about, I, I think it's funny. Again, this is not a knock. I just think it's genuinely funny. 
Austin is 52 goals right now. Mm -hmm. They are, I think the Leafs are fourth in the league, third or fourth in the league in scoring, and he's like seventh in points. Yeah. And I'm like, that is crazy. Yeah. Like, how are you not yeah, higher yeah. <laughs> in the points race? But yeah. fuck it, it doesn't um, matter. I will say, and, and like, there's Connor's disgusting and nothing matters really about to say about that. But I do think it's interesting because I felt like coming into last year, they were like, you pass too much. You need to <laughs> score more. Uh. And he scored, what, 60. Four or whatever it was, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I remember thinking, and he'd been possibly saying last year, where I was like, "Oh, I think a flip got switched," and he's like, "I'm gonna get, I'm gonna score sixty every year." Yeah. So I was kind of ready for that this year. So it has been kind of interesting to see him. Maybe, maybe not revert back is the right way to say it, but just kind of not to be like, "I'm gonna shoot every time." Maybe I Maybe go it back to his more familiar game. Yeah. 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 That's been interesting. I, I do think I look at Connor after firing Woodcroft, what they've been doing the last several months, mm -hmm. and I think. He has hit this almost breaking point mentally where he has accepted, I don't give a shit about what goes on in the regular season. We're going to get into playoffs, and that's all that matters. Get yeah. into playoffs, and then mm -hmm. then things begin. It looks like he has that mentality right now, yeah. which is very scary for the rest yeah. of the league. So yeah. I, it's, I agree with that. I think he's... I mean, he's had some big losses in the playoffs. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Talk about all the way back when they lost to Anaheim in Game 7 uh, years ago Yeah. Uh, to go to the conference finals. And then, um, obviously, Vegas, who is... <laughs> who's gonna be? Who's gonna activate another seventeen million in cap space here somehow? Um, <laughs> it's just gonna be insane. They're gonna the, trade uh, for Crosby. It's yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, Tarasenko's <laughs> going there for sure. But um, I, I, I agree. I think he's like the regular season. I don't need any more heart trophies. I don't need any more yeah. scoring yeah. race leader things. I who cares? Like that season is that season. I've clearly I'm gonna hang a hundred and something every year in my sleep, but. I, I am looking forward to seeing him in playoffs, like hit that next gear. Yeah, yeah and I too. think he's finding out too. He doesn't need to score 150 for that team to be relevant. He can score 100 to 120 and be a little more responsible. Like he's he's had years where he's got over 100 points. He's a minus. Yes. Like yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can't happen. That's yep. that, so. If he's like, okay, I stay on the plus side of things. I make I, I sacrifice a little bit of offense to make our team that much better throughout the entire ice. That's dangerous, man. Like yeah. if he's if that guy's playing a 200 foot game, who. <laughs> yep, because that's yeah. the maturity, right? Like, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. as you've been in the league a while now, now you kind of figuring out what it takes to win Absolutely. when it matters most. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you this later, but you kind of just touched on it, so I'll ask right now. When, at what point in the season, and what happens to the players at, at whenever that point is? Is it like okay, it's playoff mode now? Like, when do we hit? Like, okay, think, we're looking at things differently. Because I feel like we're seeing games that have playoff vibes right now. You're starting to get those implication right? games, like. LA last night. Yeah. Edmonton's a great example. That uh, um, Florida Carolina game, the yes. one nothing game a few yeah. nights ago. That was a fucking playoff hockey game. Yeah. And so it, it's interesting because you're at that, again, like I said, the dog days where the elite teams that know they're going to make it, and nobody's clinched, obviously, but yep. some teams have run away with some things and, and they're clearly not going to be caught in their division. And that's the thing. Home ice doesn't really matter. It, it, to interesting. A, it, to a degree for the noise and the adrenaline and stuff, but like, a good goaltender can go in and not yep. be phased by it. A good, a, a good, a good unit of players, a good team, isn't that much bothered by it. Last yeah. change is. I was gonna whatever. say, is last change a big deal or not, not really? really? Not yeah. really. Um, Do you think there's? Don't lose your train of thought. Okay. But I am just curious. First round last year, a good example. I always find it interesting. Florida Boston plays, and I, I agree with you. It doesn't seem like home ice is that, especially in hockey, mm -hmm. it's not that that important. But I do always wonder with the travel. When you're traveling back and forth from Boston to Florida for that first round, but then you look at Jersey, New York, like those guys are sleeping in their beds every night. Yeah. You know, you're not traveling yep. from, yeah. from Jersey to New York. And I wonder, does do you think that has like a huge factor? Not through the first four games. Okay. Because you're going there for games one and two. You're there for five days. You're yep. comfortable. Yeah. It it does get a little bit five, tricky six, game five, six, seven, if yeah. you're going to seven and you're like, okay, we're home, okay. play, get right back on the yep. bird. Like you're yep. that gets a little uh, I, I guess that gets a little taxing on you. Yeah, sure. Uh, as opposed to some of the other division of yeah. teams that are playing close by, but so no, not really. Great. Um, okay. But you were saying those elite teams, if they're kind, of, yeah, th they're, they're going to make it. They're they're not in coast mode, <clears throat> and they're getting up for the games that really matter, um, divisional points, things like that. You're starting to see the teams that are really like, okay, we're right in the thick. Like Toronto is mm -hmm. in the thick of it. Tampa Bay is in, in yeah. the process of yep. being like, we can't miss the playoffs with this roster. Right? Correct. So yeah. They're starting to play. Um, so you're just starting to see more games. But I really don't think you start to see it till game like 60, 
where where it really starts to elevate. Yeah. Um, you can feel the pace. Like I remember feeling the pace go up from 60, a little more at 65, a little yeah, more right. at 70. Yeah. Unless you were in at, uh, Ottawa, then you're like, pace is coming back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were going Real the other back. way. Yeah. Start, starting to make some vacation <laughs> yeah. plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start yeah. setting yeah. some tea time. Yeah. yeah. The boys yeah. were ripping push up pyramids a month yeah. out, <laughs> trying to get ready for the off season. Yeah. 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 Dude, I, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, a player in the league who plays for a certain team that is in that mode hit me up the other day about plans in may and i was like dude bro <laughs> you might be in playoffs <laughs> but he's like, he's like yeah. no, no we're, we're not in playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, right. guys are realistic yeah. guys yeah. are realistic yeah. yeah um okay and as we are rapidly approaching trade deadline you were just talking about maybe devils get a goalie any players that you think tarasenko anybody you think like might be on the move or any teams that you're like that might be a surprise seller surprise buyer what are you thinking with the deadline coming up it it's kind of this weird year where teams like New Jersey, who I think if they had any kind of goaltender, would have been in from the get-go. And they were decimated. The yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. And they f credit to them for finding a way to be in the hunt. Hanging around. Yep. Yeah. So I think that I, I do think they're going to pull the trigger on a goalie. Um, Dude, it feels like they've waited too long almost. It's like, what the fuck are you guys yeah, doing? I know. Gonna, it, 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 I do agree. It gets that to the position point, specifically. I'm yeah, like, it gets dude. to the point for me where if in the next couple of weeks here they do it, I'm going to be like, what are you doing? Should have well, done it. You should have done it so long ago. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, there's always cap implications, players waving, all that stuff. So yeah. I, from what I understand, the last trade fell for there because Calgary wouldn't retain money on Markstrom. Mm -hmm. um, but who knows if that's true. I, what's interesting is the city we're in. What, what are they going to do? Um, Saros. Yep. I, I think they want to reward their young players for a good year and like see them get in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Nashville does this every year. You get in, you play four games, and you're and yep. you're going home. See you later. Is it worth it for two playoff dates? Like, if I'm if I'm them, I'm moving Saros. Really? Um, I wanted to ask you about yes, this. I'm moving them. Uh, teams that I think would be surprise buyers. Um, nobody. I, I think that there's ten teams that can win, and they they know who they are. Yep. And the other teams are kind of in that stalemate mode where. Wait, what are they? Wait, Winnipeg. Yes. Colorado. Uh, Colorado. Dallas. Dallas. Vancouver, Vancouver, Vegas, 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 Edmonton, 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 yeah. Edmonton, um, Panthers, go to the East Panthers, New York, oh. New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll put them in there. Panthers, there, yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, Carolina, Carolina, Boston. Do you say Boston? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Boston. Yeah. yeah. So that's I, a, I think so you then no I, Toronto, I, I no Tampa. You, no, I think you say Toronto. Toronto's on. I, I, I should say Toronto too. Yes. So, uh, if 11. You're gonna, if you're going to take a team out, what did we just say that we, you take out whatever just yep say it's 11 um all those teams got cap issues yeah so you got to move money out to move money in and it, it it just becomes tricky so all the other teams are essentially either stalemated or sellers like ottawa knows they're a seller um arizona knows they're a seller whatever but mm. uh but, but i don't like really Pitt, see any is pit selling Pitt's not selling no. right gensel's can't. got to go because of the cap yeah um it, it, it's brutal man <clears throat> we talk so much about the met like i, I almost want to not talk about them but Islanders, Devils, Washington, Pitt are all in this same, and Philly, yeah. are all in this same weird space where it's like all of them could easily get in. They could also easily be out. Yeah. And they all have pretty significant players that you could maybe should move yeah. if you're not getting in the playoffs. But unfortunately, they're probably not going to know. By the time the deadline has come and gone, because if you wave, if you sell now, you're waving the flag. And it was on like exactly. it. last year, Washington was not eliminated, and they they traded Orlov, they traded Hathaway, mm -hmm. they, like they moved, they knew, they they actively waved the white flag, and it'll be interesting if any of these teams wave the white flag, right? Because it's like, I don't think they're gonna do it, but there's people online talking about Brock Nelson in yeah. in New York being like, listen, dude. This guy, he's a great player, but he's got immense value. He's a bit older. There's a younger wave generation coming here. You could get something great for him, but that would be waving the white flag. Right. And I don't think they're going to do it. Pitt is the same thing. They, they, they could and should move yeah. a lot of people, but I just don't think that they can outwardly by the deadline be like this we're we're giving up yep. you yeah yeah so no, they well because they went all in we, yeah oh yeah right so they're sure like did. we have to fight this right till the bitter end yeah. after the carl's it's almost yeah. frustrating that they're still in the hunt and they, if they're really gonna they you know? just want them to go away and, yeah. And, yeah. Well, it's more it, i mean for them like it's yeah. you know this is a if they miss playoffs and it comes down to the wire it's almost a disaster because they have an opportunity to like really reload for the future here if they were just to be like we're out 
and like it but sucks, but we're point, out and we're doing it. Because I'm such a Sid guy, like I'm always rooting for them to get in. But to your point, what do they get? Four games in the first round? Yeah. Who fucking care? You know, I'm like, come on, Pitt, get in. But I'm I like, agree. What was I, even the point of that? I want to see him get in and play the Rangers in the first round. That would actually be electric because they oh had them. God. What year was that? That would be what wild. year was that when when Pitt went up on them as the way lower seed and they had them and then Sid got hurt for like three I can't games. Remember. I, you I, remember that one I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the yeah. Just came yeah. back in one and seven the and they were like, "Yeah, we beat yeah. Pitt." And I was like, "No, you didn't, dude. Yeah. You're getting dummy." <laughs> I, I just think the Rangers got so many questions going in the playoffs about which guys are going to show up in the playoffs. Yep. So, yes. Um, totally. Yes. I want to see them go against like the old guard, and, yep. like the Malkins, the Crosby, yeah, yeah, Carlson. That would be a terrifying matchup. Be a terrifying. Like I, we worked all year for this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're my guys. I love them. But if if the Rangers see the Red Wings, for example, I think they're like, we can that we yeah. can win this. If they see the Islanders, we can win yeah. this. If they see Pitt and Crosby and Malkin and shit, they're like, this could get interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a scary. So I would not yeah. want that match. Um, and agree. then to touch on the Soros thing real quick, because it does kind of feel like we were talking about wild card last night. It does kind of feel like the, the Preds to lose at this point. Like, if they want it, I feel yeah, like yeah. they could they're keep driving and get in. Yeah. But are you kind of like blow it up or not blow it up but you know i don't know i just think like and i i have a pulse on them because i live here i just people are tired of them limping in yeah. and drafting 15th overall every year yeah, yeah. we no, want true. we want some high picks we want some players to build around um but i do think like that's the other side of it you, you've got an overperforming team based on what you yes, look at agree. with the roster you're yeah. like these guys and why is it because of Saros a lot of the nights mm -hmm. and Yossi's pretty good too. Yeah, but seriously. when you break, when you break it, to, I, I think they want to reward their young guys and their, and their roster by saying, we're really, really proud of what you guys have done. We want you to have this playoff experience to go forward with, mm -hmm. but it's just like, how many times can you do that? Yeah. Um, so I, th I, I think they're going to trade Saros. Um, that would be, and I, and I have no reason to think that I just, yeah. I, well, you somebody's going to blow them away with an offer. Uh, yeah. 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 It, yeah. What, what I think is I, I was talking to Bruins fans about this the other night because Soros is under contract next year. Yes. It's the same situation as Olmark. They're both on good contracts and both teams have a very good goaltender that they're going, this is the future. Yeah. I think both teams on maybe unfortunately are going to trade them in the summer. I think it's just an easier sell for the ownership, fan base, what have you. Yeah. But if there is a team right now here at the deadline that really needs a goalie that's going to give you an offer you can't Cause, refuse. Because they steal a goalie away from a cup, like yes. a literal cup. Yeah. Like, Dude, here's I, it's one of those things where it's like you shouldn't be afraid to do it. Agreed. It's like, honestly, to your point, if Nashville gets an offer they can't refuse and they're going... Well, fuck, man. If we trade Saros, we might not make the playoffs. I'm kind of in your camp. It's like, who fucking cares? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna lose in the first round anyway. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Boston. In in that, I'm not sure. I don't think Boston has the legs to go for a cup this year. Hmm. And yeah. even even if they do, the goalie that's gonna get it for you is Swayman. 100%. So I'm like, yeah. what are we talking about? Here? Yeah. Swayman is starting every game in the playoffs. Yeah. Fucking trade Olmark right now if someone gives you an insane yeah. offer, which they might. Agree. Yeah. I I would do that. And then you. You use it to build a little bit for the future if you're Boston, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you insulate those guys by bringing in a couple forwards. Like that decor is awesome. Yeah, that's why. I, yes. like, when you get to the playoffs, everything changes a little bit. Everything's so much tighter. Um, that I never give up on Boston just because of the decor. Like they're so solid, mm -hmm. um, and they might not score like they used to with Bergeron missing. Um, some other guys have stepped up this year, mm -hmm. but I just don't discount them because in goal in. In playoffs, goaltending and defense are so much more name of the game. I guess, yeah, yeah the name of the game, um, and they have that. So yeah. I don't know if they're prolific enough offensively. Um, yeah, yeah. Or, or they're a little older too. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, for they're sure. a little older. Marshawn's not young, but I, I'm not betting against them. Yeah, yep. yep. Um, Senators lost last night, I think. But before that, yeah. ten three and three, your boys in the last yeah. sixteen. Encourage. Yeah. Last time we talked when you were here, we were like. They might need some massive shakeups. Yep. Was that run encouraging to you that you're like, oh, you know, maybe the answers are here, or are you still like, oh, I'll tell you what the answer is. What? Shane Pinto. Yeah, yeah. it's got a lot to do with yeah. it. Shane yeah. Pinto yeah. came back. He's playing at a point per game. They're, they were, I think they were 10, 2, and, and 2 or something in his first yeah. 14 games. Like, when he gets a point, they usually win. Uh, yeah. Last night was standing, but they were due for a dud because mm -hmm. of the way they've been playing. Mm -hmm. And this is a team that, so yes, to answer your question, the run really um, kind of, I guess, changed my thought process on yeah. them. But at the same time, they're they're still young. They're still learning how to play correctly. Like DJ Smith was the right coach to teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a long time, he wasn't the right coach to coach them. Yeah. Now they have a coach that's a little more thumb on you, um, a little more accountability from mm -hmm. hey, 
Timmy Stutzler, your 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 offense is incredible. Your defense is horrible. <laughs> yeah. So let's clean some things up, and it'll help you up the ice. And like. It also, took, stop diving every five seconds. He's, yeah, he's got to. He's got to get a little better. With that, that is something but. I will chirp him <laughs> yeah. to his face for. You yeah. are it's the European in him. You he's are an it, elite, yeah. elite, elite, <laughs> elite hockey diver. player. Stop diving. Yeah. But all that being said, they it took them 15 games to buy in. I had said 20 is like the benchmark for understanding where they are. It took them 15 games to buy in. Yep. Five games to start mm-hmm. to see it. Now they're seeing it. Um, so, I'm not changing anything. I I still think. Th- a defenseman's got to go. They have three yeah. of the same guy in Chikrin, Shabbat, and Sanderson. Yeah. It's going to be Chikrin. Yeah. Um, everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, for years has just given Chabby shit. They're like, he's overrated. He's overpaid. I'm like, I'm sitting here just defending him to the death on my podcast. I'm like, you guys have no idea how good this guy is. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, your goaltending gets a little bit better. They're still the yeah. worst yeah. in the league. Yeah. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but, but they get a little bit better. And your forwards start playing 200 feet games, and Shabby's your best player. Yeah, and, right. And you're just, and I'm just sitting here going, "Told you, thank fuck, this yeah. worked out." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to defend them to the grave and yeah. Yeah. shit to bed when everybody around them got better. But, but no, it's it's just playing a better brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Honestly, awesome. I think with him, even the eye test, you can see how good of a player he yeah. is. And yeah. it's like, if there's bad situations around him, it's going to make his stats look terrible. It's going to make his games look worse than they actually are. Yeah. But then when you see this, it's getting figured out. Yeah. You see how impactful he is in such a positive way yeah. well and, and like the easy thing to do for six years was when you were losing you're like just run shabby 30 minutes and it's like yeah. that hurts him yes like it, it, yes it helps us yeah. it moves the puck up more but at the same time it hurts him like yeah. making mistakes because he's exhausted yes you're, yeah. you're running him 28 to 30 minutes a night and it hurts him in the long run too it's yeah. like you don't want to put yeah. those miles on him in, he, in, he got a he he fractured his tibia this year cutting yeah. like on a, a routine turn. I'm like, that's a guy that's just over you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, that is ridiculous. That's going to happen. Over you. Yeah. That is ridiculous. I'm like, God, he's like the horse. Somebody just took him out back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but fucking um, insane. But he's now he's down to like 23, 24 minutes and he's settled good in. Spot. And, yeah, yeah, good spot. They look good, man. A chicken's yeah. going to go, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think Tarasenko too. I think the both of them. I do too. I mean, every game I watch, like last night, they lost six to three. Tarasenko is phenomenal again. Yeah. Um, most nights I watch him, he's he's just a cerebral player, but he can shoot. He can make mm-hmm. play. Like he's he's gonna help somebody. But problem is, he loves Ottawa. I was gonna say. I thought he you loves, said he loved it there. Yeah. Doesn't so want to the go. other yeah. one, uh, it was, is Giroux. Like yeah. I, I look at Giroux's age and how. Oh my God, could he help someone? Yeah. But I think same deal. He's like, I'm not gonna go. I yeah, think he just he built a home there. He's from there. Like, yeah, from yeah. Hearst or whatever. But yeah. that's home for him. Exactly. I don't think he wants to leave, but he does want it. Like you're at the age. Don't you want to chase a cup once? Right, like yep. that was come on, yeah. We yeah. talked about that with Sid. If Pitt doesn't make it, I'm like, go let him yeah, compete let him somewhere. Yeah. He is a better, oh, I mean, not a better example, but a more unique example because he's never got one. Yep. It's yeah. like I, yeah. I, I totally hear that. If I ran, I'd be like, dude, you think about talk about fucking LTIR situation, right? You, I look at a Colorado, I look at a Vegas, and I'm like, yeah, yeah that would be a pretty good home for you. Yep. Like, holy hell, yeah, even no, New I, York. Yep. I agree. It, I, I'd like to see him go, but. I, Problem is, most nights he's their best player. Yeah. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, truthfully, yeah. when you watch the game, you're like, "G had another good one." Yeah. Just another good game. Yeah. Um, so he thinks uh, the game, his computing speed speed is just. Oh my gosh, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's like, he's not a good skater. If you watch it, like he he can move, but he takes a while to get moving. Yeah. He just he just he's like Mark Stone in a sense. Um, he just goes to the right place ahead of the yeah. Uh, like yep. just reads the game and computes the game. The puck as soon as he gets the puck, he knows where it's going immediately. He's so a kite runner. So impressive. Awesome. He's yeah, a kite yeah, runner. Yeah, like awesome. he's just a guy who knows where to be a, a step yeah. ahead of everyone else. That's so awesome. he just he beats you there. Um, yeah, uh, Chelios had his number retired in Chicago the other night. Sick game. Came yeah. back there and everything. So he said in his speech, he was like uh, the. Uh, you know, the, and without doubt, the best American player of all time, Patrick Kane. Now, he's got a long way to go, but I wanted you to weigh in on the Kane Matthews. Oh, it's not even, come on. I'm going to get absolutely raked for this. <laughs> I can't wait for <laughs> this. Thanks for this. <laughs> this one I had no warning of. Uh, <laughs> dude, you can't compare these two. Are you kidding me? One's got three cups, and there's a massive. Okay, game. okay. It's yeah. not close in that it's Kane. It's Kane, and it's not even close. Okay, well, yeah. okay. Finish. Keep going. Finish your thought. Three cups, MVP, Conn Smythe, every like everything you can win, he's mm-hmm. won. Um, also, so clutch. So like clutch. He's yep. So clutch. Yeah. Um, and Matthews has time, and he's got a roster there that I don't know if you're competing for the cup. They they need a goaltender too. Yep. But um, but no, I I just don't. I you can say the greatest player and the greatest American goal scorer, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, if okay. It gets to that point, but then you're then you're bringing in Brett Hall and right, um, yep. some mm-hmm. other names. But so it, what Matthews he, is doing now is comparable to 
I know. The, the best numbers in history. That's why I think right? it's an interesting question. Or it's it's tracking towards an interesting okay, question. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I, I was going to yeah. say, it, it's not even close to an interesting question right, right now. Right now. Yeah. If yeah. you want to say, we're looking at, you know, six years down the road, and we'll see what has happened, then yes, it's but, tracking. But here's my question to you guys. Let's say Matthew, what's Kane, like 15 years or something? Or In the league? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Whatever. Yeah. My point is, like, let's say Matthew's with good health, good luck and good health, has an equally long career. And finish like breaks. Ovi's gonna break Gretzky, but then Matthews breaks Ovi. Like he he retire. Austin Matthews retires with maybe a let's give him a heart just for the argument. No cups, but the most goals ever. Blah blah blah. Are you still like it's Kane in the landslide because of the cups? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got. That's not just one. He didn't win once. He yeah. won three. Yeah, and he won the Con Smythe. And he's about yeah. to win another with Detroit. Dude. That's <laughs> <That's cool>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. No, I just to me it's not even close. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, ask me again in five years. Yeah, yeah. right. Toronto breaks through. Maybe, but. Uh, see, I'm I'm not so sure. Sorry, Blake. I'm not so sure about that. But I do think something that's interesting is I think Austin will eventually. And it's crazy to say to, you know, there's so many fucking insanely good players that he's playing with. I think he'll have three, four hearts by the end of it. Yeah. And that's interesting. But I don't think he's going to touch Kane with the cups. I really what if he gets two? Two cups? Yeah. And, and all the goal records, you know? Yeah, all then, the goal yeah, records, then couple then cups. Then you're having a very real conversation. Then you're having a very real conversation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. All right, last thing before we get into our favorite new segment. Um, we were talking with uh, Rooney, Chris Rooney last night, um, the referee, about fighting. Because, you know, everyone's watching Rempe going yeah, nuclear. Yeah, uh, What are your thoughts on fighting? Because we had a fun convo about it. You Important part of the game? Yeah. Or like, yeah, okay. Yeah, but I'm a traditionalist. I, I hate how much the game's changed to begin with. Like, I understand that the social impact now with, the way we look at head injuries, the way we look at every, like the way you break things down yep. for safety. Um, I just like, I don't like three on three. I, yeah. I'm not even a big fan of shootouts, but yeah, you can't, do, you can't just do five on five regular season yeah. and, and whatever. Um, I don't like loser points for the overtime yeah. loss. It just, I, I'm a traditionalist and a purist at the game. So I, I think fighting has a place. I've been on teams where a fight has absolutely changed the way we approach the game. Yeah. Wow. Um, you can feel the ice tilt. Like it's just, it's just an important part. Um, I don't like the stage part. Like, I, like, I, and I guess I wouldn't call it stage. Rempy's coming to the league and he's had what three fights in four games, whatever it is. Yeah, it's in ridiculous. Um, and the, the stage fighting is like when you're talking at the red line before the game and and you're you're in it up. Like I like fights that come break from, out. Yep. Yes, that break out from the game. And I think yeah, agree with that completely. It's got to stay. It's always gonna. Stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think my only two things to say on this are one. I, I, I totally agree with that, by the way. Um, I truly hate, and it was interesting to hear refs in the league hate it too. Yeah. I hate fighting after a clean hit. Drives yeah. me insane. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. pop someone clean, nothing dirty, and then the other team comes in and fight, and now you're on the box for five minutes, I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. Yeah, you bury somebody and you get it. You got it. I think it's so stupid, and it should be, I mean, I don't know if you can ever remove it, but there should be serious ramifications. If you... If if someone gets a clean hit, there's no penalty, and then you fly in to fight me. Yeah, you should be tossed from the game. Yeah, right. I, seriously, I know. I, I I think it's absurd. And then the one thing that Rooney said that I I really loved and was interesting, it was the Delorier Rempe fight. Mm -hmm. And he said he went up to Delorier after that fight, after the takedown, and was like, "Dude, don't fucking do that takedown shit like that again." Yeah, he was like, it's like slip they, their helmets when their buckets yeah. are yeah. off, because that is that's going to be. God forbid, yep. the next step of just the social awareness of it. Yep. If someone gets taken down in a fight without a helmet and they split their head open on the ice, yep. now we're going to have a whole new conversation of people being like, this can't happen. Anymore. No, I agree. And I do think that that would be, it would behoove the league to obviously keep fighting in, but make it very aware of like, I know you're in the moment, stop taking guys down if, yep. if the helmets are off because that could get real messy. And I, I thought that was a good point of him to bring up. I, I think I like your point about the fact that after a clean hit, so if I if I bury somebody and I have to defend myself, yeah, and we have to have a fight, I I believe that the guy that threw the hit that had to defend himself in a fight shouldn't get a penalty, hundred yeah, percent, and just yeah, give the other guy five. So yep. it's a yep. five minute major. Yep. Yep. Nobody gets kicked out. Yep. Um, everybody's still in the mix, but you hurt your team by jumping a guy for a clean hit. Yes, yeah. that's and cool. Then, but then it's like, then you get in the discussion of where's what's the line on a clean was hit? Was that one clean? Yeah. Was that yeah. one? Yeah, exactly. So I, I think it's simple. Of if there's no penalty. Fuck yeah. off. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, right. yeah. There's no Technically call. clean. Yeah. You want to be mad at point. someone, be mad at the ref. Yep. ref. But if there's no penalty called and you get jumped, you are not going to the box and the other guy's going for 10. Yep. Is, I, I think, 
is what the rule should be. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's stupid. I Sweet. Like that. Yeah. Okay, now let's go inside the locker room. Yes. Where we get to ask an NHLer. Well, you guys, I should say. The listeners yeah. get to ask oh, an yeah, NHLer yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, what do we got first, Bob? Which ones are your Which ones are your favorite? Oh, just roll them. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like them. All. I I liked everything you sent me, but okay. I love it. Okay, first one that we got submitted. How much money actually changes hands during card games on the plane? So it depends on what you're playing. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, is there a game that you see, you feel like the most money is getting tossed around in? Uh, post. Uh, Ooh, okay, hey. explain it. Do you know post? No. Oh man, this one gets going quick. Like okay. I, I think the pot. We, we had a flight that got delayed and then canceled. Um, and the pot, we were sitting on the plane waiting for, for so long. And it's, uh, we had eight guys going. And then it became 10 because it was like too many guys. Yeah, yeah. Everyone the pot was like well over 20K. Um, <laughs> and guys were betting 3,500, 4,000. Um, just like you can bet the whole pot when it's your turn. So you have two, two decks of cards. You shuffle them all. <clears throat> excuse me. You shuffle them all up. First time you go, everybody throws in 50 bucks to start. So, okay. you know, 50 times eight, you got 400 bucks in there to start. You're only allowed to bet the first time around on what you put in. So you can only bet 50 bucks, yep. but you, you, you can pass. And most of the time you're just passing. So I flip a card, it's a two and it's a three. You're passing. Yep. The goal is not to hit the post and to, and which to, is, and uh, the two card. and the three would be the post, right? Got it. Okay. Right? So you don't want to hit the post cause that doubles the pot mm-hmm. or your bet. Yep. Um, so if I get if you get an ace, ace is low, yeah, and then you get a king. You have every card in the deck, yep. to hit, yeah. Um, so you're like pot, I'll take that, whatever. Yep. But whatever reason, this night, man, <laughs> like um, this night just got out of out of control. <laughs> Guys were hitting post on two thousand, so they're putting four thousand yep. in. Guys <sighs> were hitting post on three thousand, six thousand yep. going in, and then guys were pulling them out. One player in particular got king three, and that's like a that's no like a, brainer. Yeah, that's an easy win. Big you got to go, and he hit the post three times in a row, and like oh. you're just sitting there, um, and we just like we ran out of chips, so we started like <laughs> putting IOUs in the middle, um, car keys, then, car yeah, keys getting yeah, tossed yeah, in, right, right. but yeah, the game was slipped yeah. in the, in the and, like, pot. and we're all loaded too because we have a couple days off, yeah. um, and then finally they're like canceled, so like one guy. <laughs> So we stay at this hotel in the middle of nowhere. I think we were in Edmonton, um, right by the airport. So one guy's got all the chips in like a paper bag. One guy's got all the cards just held exactly where they are. So yeah. we get back to the hotel and we're like all running to somebody's room to finish this game. And the game went on to like four in the morning, but I forget who won the pot. The pot eventually just got bet down low enough to where it yep. wasn't a big deal. But that that game gets, yep. there's always five, six grand in there um, for the most part. And then I... Schnarps never gets too out of control. You lose a buck a point and you yeah. whatever. A um, couple hundred bucks change in hand. Texas Hold'em gets pretty high. Yep. I've seen yeah. Stingers there. Um, Is there yeah. anyone you can mention of a former teammate that was just an absolute savage with tossing money in? Um, so Spez, Jason Spezza lost a few, and like not bad, but just lost a few um, trips in a row. So we would always do it by trips. And I was the bookkeeper for some time. Somebody else was. And like, yeah. You get off the plane and I'm like, tally up. So somebody like, I'm plus 575, plus 300, minus a thought, whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. And like, it would always be off by like 300 bucks. So you're like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so frustrating. Like, I used to come home from road trips. My wife would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, trying to make this make sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, this but, math, not math yeah. right now. <laughs> math yeah. math right now. Yeah. Like, I got two calculators going right now. Because then you would have to add up every flight from the trip. And some yeah. of the flights are six flights or whatever. Yeah. So, or some of the trips. But anyway, Spez was like, I'm done. I'm not going into a hand, and it was like I think we played ten, five ten or ten twenty, uh, Annie's, and he was like, I'm not playing a hand unless I raise it. So he would have like two, three suit it, and he'd be like fifty bucks, yeah. and you're like, I would have limped into this hand for fifteen yeah, bucks, right. but I'm not doing it for fifty. And he's like, I'm not, I'm done. And yep. um, he was one Dion Phaneuf, uh, just because he had so much money, was like, I'm gonna bully you right out of this pot. Yeah. Like, I have I have trip aces. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not yeah. getting bullied out yeah. of this pot. You can't bully me. <laughs> yeah. But he would either lose big or win big. Yep. Yeah. There's no in between. But um, he was a good player, actually. So yeah, those two come to mind. Carl Carl would bully too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Carl would bully well, quietly. I love that. Quietly. Yeah. He would. He was one of the. He sat in the corner and he never shuts up. Otherwise, unless he's playing poker. And then he's just quiet the yeah. whole hand, just the whole time. Which is scary. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, this guy's yeah, yeah, afraid of that. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's a We're just behavior. trying to have some beers and yeah. play cards. You're looking <laughs> at him and he's, he's taking the card game as seriously as he takes yeah. the real game. Yep. You're like, all right, yep. I don't want to be a yep. part of this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Okay, next next fan question. What is the most mad 
you've ever seen another player or coach and what happened. Ooh. So I was trying to think, and you guys are going to love this answer, Fuck being yeah. from Portland, Maine. Kevin Deneen <laughs> was really? my... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolute <laughs> top two coach for me, him and Guy Boucher. Yeah. I absolutely love those two. Guy, um, and Kevin was my first coach. I grew up idolizing him. He actually remembered meeting me, meeting me as a kid when I was, went to like a Flyers thing. That feels good. Yeah. A restaurant. It was incredible. Yeah, and he was like... Uh, it was at a ref, and we were in. I, I and don't quote me, but I think we were in Providence. Okay. Um, and he hated this one ref, and the ref kept coming up and down the thing all night, and just be, every time he would come by, like nothing was happening. Yeah. And Dino was just on him. Yeah. And you're like, guys, come, like, calm it down, Dino. Yeah. Um, and the ref finally comes over, and and like Dino's red, and yeah. it was over a stupid penalty, and he's like, Dino, it was a penalty. Yep. I called it. Get over it. I'm done. If I hear from you again, I hear one more word, you're out. And like, I can just see the flames, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. smoke coming yeah. out the ears. And like, we were, I, I remember we were winning the game. Did you think um, it was a penalty too? Like, it was, you, a, it was yeah, a, yeah, it was yeah. like 100% it was, a penalty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, nobody on the bench said a word. Even the guy that did it, yeah. I remember was Mike Hoffman, not the one that from yeah. Ottawa, different Hoffman. Yeah. He just, he didn't even look. He just started Went skating. Like, yeah. that's how blatant <laughs> this yeah. was. Yeah. Um, I fucking love those yeah. ones. And, and Dino's like, his hands are like this, right? And he's stewing. And I'm like, this is, this is personal. This got yeah. nothing to do with this yeah. game. Um, and he said, I hear one more word, you're gone. I'm done. And Dino lets the play go by a couple of times, no words. And then I forget the rest. And he goes, hey, ref, hey, hey. And like he says it really quiet. He goes, I hope you have your ears. Sh- <laughs> I hope you have your ears shut. Because I'm about to call you. <laughs> and just, dude, went, mother effing yeah. fuck. Like, it was so bad. And like, those of us on the bench, it's it's to the point where it's so bad that like, I remember oh, I, stand next to, I was sitting next to Brian Saucedo, uh, a like, California kid, and we yeah. just looked at each other. We we're like, oh my God, he's gone. Gone, right? yep. yeah. yeah. The ref... It was almost to the point too where the ref was like, "I gotta laugh at this." Yeah, and Dino. There was no reason to be mad. Nothing. Yep. The game was like clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was just big game. I was like, somebody kicked Dino's dog before he got on the bus today. Yeah. Like something <laughs> happened. Um, <laughs> so he snapped and gets kicked out and like uh, kicks all the sticks. I'm like, yeah. oh, "There's my twig yeah. on the yeah. floor." Yeah, damn it, dude. <laughs> Come back in. Um, after the game, he's just sitting there having a chew. Like nothing happened. Yeah. Like nothing. Um, and I'll never, I'll, like, I'll never forget the face. Yeah. Like, yeah. It right. was a rage, and I was like. This has nothing to do with hockey. Something's going on here today. Yeah. So, God damn. I, I love that. He's such a beauty, man. There are those stories or those moments where you can see a guy, you're like, you needed to let off steam for some reason. Yeah. And glad you got it out, but holy yeah. shit. He was, the, he was one of the easiest coaches I ever played for. I'll tell you a quick story. We, we were down 2 nothing to Providence in the playoffs in the second round. Um, coming home. So we're have, we have a practice on a day off before game three. Yeah. Uh, at the Cumberland Civic yeah, Center, God. right? Been there yeah, time. Yeah. So he calls me over uh, and calls Stephen Dixon over, who you guys probably remember from the yep. World Junior Team. Oh, yeah. Um, never played an NHL game, but scored in Halifax in a preseason game. So he's like, all the girls thought I did, chummy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like he was yeah, just a beauty. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite guys of all time. But he calls us over. He shows us. He hands us each a DVD. He's like, these are your shifts from the first two games. I want you to watch them and then go throw these DVDs into the Casco Bay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's so like, because the, the series starts now, basically, or whatever. Yep, dude, that's and fucking me. Stephen Dixon there. puts his yeah. arm around and goes, don't you worry, old boy, we're homers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you just talked to our coach. Like, it was incredible. It was incredible. We came back and won the series. Did you? Six, oh, yeah. Fuck we came yeah, back dude. and won the there series. That's a sick relationship yeah. to have with I feel like that's kind of the yeah. more the norm these days. Is that relationship with a coach? Yeah, but yeah. It, you know, it feels like it's a more player coach vibe. Yes, yeah. um, the the Montes of the world. Yeah, versus how it how it versus the Babcocks. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, he's he was definitely before his time in that. Yeah, he had a shot in the NHL. He just, I, I from what I understand, I think he was like so gung ho and so hardcore that like. The guy stopped listening. Yeah, yeah. They're like every game's not game seven. Yeah, um, the refs were like, yeah. "Get this guy out of here." Yeah, yeah I'm not doing. With I'd this. love to see him back in the league, though. That'd be great. Okay, next one. How often are you guys getting bag skated at practice? V- very few and far between. Yeah. Now, uh, like when I started, I played for Carlisle, so every other day, like yeah. our pre- <laughs> really, dude, our pregame skates were 45 minutes back then. We were doing three day on- of. Yeah, we like we used to do three on three. Um, with the sticks flipped over for yeah. puck possession on game days below the stop of the circle. So that's it's like, that's a grind. You <laughs> dump the puck in the yeah, corner. That's... And then like, I played with Getz, Laugh, and Perry, and we were like, we're going to play 21 minutes doing this exact same shit. Yeah, this is yeah. our style of game. What are we doing? But yeah. like, he just figured, he's like, all three of you are bigger guys that need to move. Um, so he, he would skate us a little bit, 
but I can I can only remember like a handful of times in my career that we were like this is gonna be an absolute bagger yeah. and they were um, most guys most guys in like I would say 50% of the league take it upon themselves now to mm -hmm. do something after practice oh. if they feel like they need it and that's the younger generation they're just yeah. like I need this um, it wasn't that way when I started it, yeah. it is now though um, and a lot of times your bag skate now is four to five reps of like 45 seconds. You're just, you're just flushing the shit sure. out of your system. Like just guys are in yeah. so, so good a shape. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like even the guys that you look at, like we'll use Pat Maroon, for example, mm -hmm. like Pat Maroon's in an insane shape. He's like, yeah. when you, when you really break it down, like yep. he's, he's going to be able to do any bag skate you put on. He's going to yeah. be slower than the rest, but he's at an elite level. Yeah. He's still got yeah. the win. Yeah. Like yes. He can do yeah. it. So Coaches don't bother you much. Right, I guess they, I guess they, they don't right. need to because yeah. they've got shaking it upon themselves. Yes. They're like, it's okay, yeah. dude. Yeah. 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 Is um, it, was it a punish? It did, but yours, it, with Carlisle, sounds like it wasn't a punish. Like, in my mind, I think it's always a punishment. They're like, hey, you played like shit last night. You guys are skating all day tomorrow. Yeah. But yours sounds like it was like, no, this is what we do mm. pregame. This is what we do pregame yeah. with him. And he, he absolutely put us on the line. I remember one time we were in Dallas. We had a, a hard practice. A regular day and then a game um and on in the hard practice like he fucking whacked us yeah whacked us to the point where like um gets off perry and i were like we were we were dead yep um <laughs> and then two days later i scored two i get on the plane and he never complimented me because i was a younger guy yeah. and um he's like that's the best you've moved in a long time good game and i was like thanks and i was walking back to my walk and i was like Fuck. Yeah. Now he's justified. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I should have shit the bed yeah. instead of exhausted. Too, but... too tired. Coach. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that I bagged you because yeah. it clearly worked. It's, and you're like, it, it God fucking damn it, I should have sucked. He used to do a thing called age skate because we had such an older team, right? You had Solani, Niedermeyer, yeah. Pronger, yeah. the other Niedermeyer. Like, there's so many older guys where Getzloff Perry and I were so much younger than everybody else. Um, and you'd be like, down and back. And he'd be like, if you're over 35, off the ice. Oh, a that's guys. cool. 33, Oof. 32. And then he knew exactly how old Chris Kunitz um, was just a touch older than those guys. And Cooney was always part of their little crew when they went out on the road. So he would like give Cooney a couple extra and be like, Cooney, whatever. And then be like down the, uh, poor Brendan Mickelson would be up from the minors and he'd yeah. be like, what am I doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so him and I'd be the only 20, 21 year olds. Yeah. And he would just up and down, getting Corey and get, oh to, get the salt God. out or whatever. And then he would fucking, as soon as he would like, if you're, if you're under 23, stay on the ice and just be me and Mickelson and be yeah. like, we'll do four or five more. And I'm like, yeah, I hate this Come guy. on, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude. But he was such a, like, he was, I would have loved to have played for him when I was older. I yeah, was that's cool. Young to play that's for cool. Him. Yeah, because you would have got off the ice early. Great. Yeah. Yes. We, was great. He was a good coach. He was a good coach. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Next one. What's one of the coolest things you ever got to do because you were an NHL player? I was actually thinking about, and like, honestly, so many cool experiences doing different things. And like, Touring the Apple headquarters was unbelievable. Oh, um, sweet. But yeah. bar none. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Bar none, though. Or I, I'm sorry, it was Google. Whatever okay. one's in San Fran area. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Maybe no. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, Cupertino. Google, though, yeah. Cupertino, yeah. 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 The one that's always on your phone when you're checking the weather. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. Like, who comes <laughs> up? Where the fuck is this place? <laughs> yeah. So it was after my rookie year. Uh, it was just George Paris and I, because we were the two locals that were staying in Anaheim for the summer. Mm -hmm. They called us, and they were like, there's this military base, um, and you would think, um, in Carlsbad, the, the, the famous one. It oh, wasn't yeah. that. They were like, okay. no, 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 this is something different. They want you to come out and they want to show off and whatever. So they give me the directions and I'm like, where the fuck am I going? Like, yeah. I'm driving in the desert. Um, you, you just go inland. Like, yep. you're going to Vegas and then down. And they're like, you know, Siri or whatever is like Google Maps. Like, take this exit. I'm like, there's nothing here. I'm not taking this exit. Yeah. So I get <laughs> off, road. obviously. Yeah. It's just me driving by my car. Uh, George and I didn't drive together. I'm, I'm talking to him on the phone. I'm like, do you know where we're going? He's like, I have no idea. Yeah. This is whatever. So we get off and you just drive 10 miles straight. Straight desert. The mountains are there. You're never... And then you get to a little gate and they're like, you're at the base. I'm like, what? Yeah. And you go over the hill and you just see the city. It's like a, right, it's like a city in the middle of nowhere. You're like, there's no way they could have pulled this off. But it's where they go before they go overseas. Whoa. So we went in, met them, had lunch met a bunch of guys did an autograph thing which yeah. the guys didn't really care they were really yeah. just they're like thanks for coming blah 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 and we were like this is an unbelievable experience um once you're in there the supermarket everything stays but we went out into the hills and watched them clear rooms like they were getting ready to go overseas oh, and like we yeah, stood yeah. up on the thing and watched them do live action room clearing they have um they had like 150 actors that spoke the language of where they were going and we're yelling at them and like recreating daily life for these guys over there. 
Holy uh, shit. And I remember just standing there and I was like, oh, all I do is chase a little pucker. Yeah, this yeah. is absolutely fucking ballistic. Like I could not believe what I was seeing. And the actors, like they had, they were holding dead chickens. Like, like yeah, they were yeah, taking wow. it so seriously. Yeah. Like they were clearing a market road and everything. And um, I remember walking away from that with like just a newfound respect and like complete newfound respect for what those guys did. Yeah. It was insane. That is fascinating. Those so are cool. big time perspective moments. It right? was. Yeah. Where you're I like, was 21. She, oh, oh, yeah. Was like, wow. Yeah. I, I'm like thinking rookie year i'm the man like, yeah, yeah yeah like i'm excited um and i just i remember thinking that like it was a silent drive home for myself it was like yeah. a very ref yeah. <laughs> reflective yeah that's such a cool like, answer like, because agree dan your answer could so easily be something amazing you know we got invited to the super backstage bowl backstage passes and this and that yep. but it's yeah that is kind of a backstage situation that not everyone gets to experience but it was a really cool life lesson it that's was. an amazing yeah. story and answer very cool yeah, yeah. It was a blast. Yep. Okay, I got two more for you. This one, I'm kind of combining two questions because people ask <laughs> similar things. So it's, <clears throat> what percentage of guys in the league do you feel like don't try or don't even like hockey that much? And the other one was, what percentage of games is the team just like, well, we're not feeling it tonight? Okay. So I thought about this, and I, I was like, I don't know how to do a percentage on this. But I will say every team has – there are no games when, when you don't try. There are games when you batten down the hatches. As yeah. a team, and okay. you're like, we don't have it. The energy's shit in the room. You can feel it during the day. Do you, okay, uh, all right, that was my... Uh, yeah. Do you know it going into the game, or is it something you realize in, in the, the first through the first period, and you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, we don't have it today? The other problem with this is a, a lot of times at warm-ups, guys are like, oh, no. Um, like, <laughs> like, we oh, suck. shit. <laughs> More flex all. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you can feel it. The team's just flat. Like, yep. yeah. the soccer game's not the same. But the problem with that is every team has an energizer bunny. Okay. That just, you're like, stop. Like, at all times, because yeah. sometimes you get your pulse from that person when they're warming up, and you're like, okay, I can get there. I can get there. Yeah. And you just can't. So I would say, I would say one to two out of ten teams feel like they're just, they're just flat. Okay. Passes aren't crisp. The energy is oh, one same. game out of ten. One game, one, two one out, out of ten. ten. So yeah. eight, eight times a year. So yep. that's what, I don't know what that is. Uh, um, yeah, 10%. 10%, 10%, yeah, 10 yeah, 10%. Yeah, yeah, let's just say that. Yeah, 10%. So that's as a team. As a, as a player, I would say 20% of players hate hockey. Um, God damn, dude. That is so crazy. Two out of dude. 10. I, yeah. I, see, I, this is such an eye opening thing that we've been talking about recently that I think more people yep. need, or not need to know, but it's interesting to know. Because, yeah, yeah. yeah you, we get the sense of it too. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's, and it's more often the third and fourth line guys uh -huh. or your fifth and sixth defensemen that know, hey, like this is, this is a million dollar job or yep. some in two point, whatever. Like, sure. your higher paid guys mm -hmm. love the game. Um, I've only played with one or two that could have given or taken the game at that level. Yeah. Um, but it's a grind, and like, there's no glory in what they do in the third and fourth line role at times, and the fifth and sixth defenseman times, and it just I think becomes a business and a more of a job than a game to to guys like that. They're yeah. grinding to get another year. They're grinding to get 600 games and pension and things like that. Like those things are yeah. always thought about for players. So um, I would say 20 percent. And like I'm just thinking back to one team. It was almost 40 percent. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like like. And if you're not on a good team, it becomes much harder to like every oh, dude. part of it, right? Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes a ton of yeah. sense, actually. They all know how fortunate they are. Like, no, everybody knows we're, like, you're so lucky. You're playing hockey for a living. Yeah, yeah. But it does become, for for two out of ten guys, it becomes, this is a job. And Just I would a job. rather do something else. Yes. Yeah. I mean, man, I, I think about, I mean, you, you play, lucky to play at a certain level when you're younger. Usually, we all have the similar thing, which you played on great teams, mm -hmm. but... We've all had that one experience where you had one season where you just kind of sucked. Even back then, you get to the end of the season, you know you're not making playoffs, and you're a little bit like, get me out of here. Yeah. Like, you love the game, but you're like, I I'm done with this season. Yeah. I think about some of these teams that are, they've been eliminated since fucking November. Yeah. And you're a fourth line guy on that team and you're getting into the dog days of the last 20, 30 games of the season. Yeah. How, how Everything hard. Everything hurts. Mu yeah, you know? how hard must it be to just keep going at it, at it every single day, being it, like, Jesus, man, I'm yeah. so over this. Especially if you're in that role. Yep, like that. exactly. Like, like you said. Yeah. On the other side of it, though, and obviously don't say any name, but have you ever seen someone get that fat ticket and then stop caring? Because now they're like, I'm fucking rich as hell now, I don't give a shit. I can't say I've seen that. No, okay. yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a player cave it in after they got paid. Um I've seen players go the other way. Like I got paid, and like now I have to justify it. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah. they're like lit the fire a little more. So yep. more that. Than that's good. That's what you yeah, want to yeah. hear yeah. as a fan. Yeah, like, yeah no, I don't, yeah, dude. I don't think I've ever seen a player like 
get a contract and be like, Phew. yeah, yeah, they have Please, to. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, Who's never... your favorite Energizer Bunny you've played with? Jason Blake. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy. Awesome. Yeah. If I could ISO cam a guy <laughs> and just be like, what's that guy doing right now? It would have been him. You remember that song? It's one of the worst songs in the world. Uh, Austin by Blake Shelton. What is that? It's like the it. country love song. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I know the song. Yeah. Um, Christ. It's like, play it, but I know this. It's so old. Yeah. And like that was back when we had the iPad shuffle in the room and I was in charge of music and it like went through my <laughs> iTunes and I had bought the song for 99 cents. Like I, they would always give me 500 bucks at the, end of the beginning of the year and they're like, go load this thing up. Yeah. Um, and then Todd Marchant would do some of it, Matt Bolesky, But this one year, Austin came on in the room and Blake, uh, Jason, like uh, Blakey was like, what is this? I'm like, ah, oh, it's a country song, just switch it. Yeah. He's like, no. <laughs> it's like, it's horrible, switch it. And he fell in love with the song. And it would drive me insane because I would leave, and as soon as I would leave, he'd go put it on. You'd walk back in the room. <laughs> you'd go into the training room, he'd put it back yeah. on. And I'm like, this was months of this yeah. song. Yeah. And so that one, and then you used to, we used to fuck with Timu all the time, because, and it's one of those songs where I swear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You would just walk by Timu. <laughs> and sing that and his day was fucked his day was done <laughs> he couldn't get that song out of his head and you would just hear Timu coming out of the shower singing the moon yeah. <laughs> and you're like you're like we got him yep. yeah oh that's that was, fucking that great him again yep. dude. yeah uh, so but jason blake man just yeah watching him warm up watching him practice like, like <laughs> yeah do you ever go to sleep yeah you're like how do you live like that? But I'm sure yeah. he helps you get there some nights. You he know? did, actually. Like, oh, he did. When I was on his line, and he'd be like, wake up. and like, Ugh. all right. Yep. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. I love it. Okay, last one. This one's hilarious. And you don't have to name names either, but someone submitted craziest wag story, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't really have any, like, absolute crazy wag stories from, like, interactions or anything. Um, I'll just touch on the, like, so there's a wives room or wives girlfriends. Yep. It's a family room, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they get, I'll just say they get heavy poured in there. <laughs> so um, we would always be getting dressed and like a lot of guys would drive separate because they count, right, yeah. whatever. But you would go up and your wife would carpool and whoever, you'd just go pick your wife up and you'd go to the tunnel to get your car. Um, and it was always like, except for one team, we always knew who got over. So yeah. <laughs> like, um, we'd all be getting our suits on and we're like, who is it tonight? Who's going to draw yeah. the short end of the stick? And like, they would get over served and you would come up and be like, did you guys, what do you guys think of the game? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, like what zero recollection of the, not, not blackout drunk, but like zero. Yep. They just had a party. They just hung out. Yeah. 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 yeah they, well, it's kind of sick. It's yeah. 41 parties, 41 yeah. free parties. Yeah. Just hang with the girls. Yeah. You got the babies running around all the yep. time. And like, you know, you have a DD cause your, your husband's just played. So yeah. we're taking yeah. you home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Good point. So they're like, yeah, this is, this, what a setup. Right. Dude. But I, I like other than the famous one that everybody knows about, which I'm not going to talk about yep. in Ottawa, um, yeah. Yeah. which wasn't an interaction for me so i don't know much about yep. about it truthfully but <laughs> yeah that one that, that was a wild one that, that was a wild one yeah, that was a wild <laughs> yeah, one. that one that one made uh, it to the room a little dude, bit dude uh, we were at, we were actually just in the family room in jersey great family okay. room great family room. and yeah. um i think it's kind of a funny element of people talk about different barns all the time which has the best facilities the family room is a a factor a big like, factor yeah. there is a there are different standards of family rooms around the oh, league, yeah. which is yeah. interesting yeah. yeah the one in anaheim is pretty bad um but the one in Ottawa is unbelievable. They have like a mini rink for the kids. Yeah, oh, the, sweet. The one in Tampa Bay is unbelievable. They have a full, like a mini rink the size of this room. Really? For the kids. God, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. I feel like um, the ones that have a uh, pretty significant daycare there's vibe. There's a little setup, playground yeah. in Jersey. I, I mean, I, I don't blame you. If I were a, a, a mother of multiple kids and I go to that family room and I can get bombed while people watch my kids yeah. and then. Yeah. Yeah. husband's driving home hell yeah, yeah. it was funny <laughs> it was, go for it we always like the girl that took care of the room is cheryl and she became a friend obviously over the years and um i'd walk up and be like cheryl who is it tonight and she's like yeah. i don't know yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i was she's, like who did you over for cheryl's no snitch <laughs> yeah no she was no snitch yeah. <laughs> she, she's, she's like she was, i just looked down and poured yeah. doesn't matter who it's for she was, she was phenomenal phenomenal that's incredible that's beautiful awesome well yeah. that's the batch yep yeah, great well, time. Before we gotta go, we gotta take a second to shout out uh, a friend of mine, Christina. Who? Yes, um, absolutely. How many years ago have we? Fifteen. Fifteen. Really? Was, a, was your first game, and she's seen, and it was in her first building was Anaheim, Anaheim when I was there, and now she's seeing her thirty-second building tonight in Nashville. So she's completed saved, the journey. She completed the journey, and, yeah. and just so happens that I live here, and we touched base, so uh, we were able to catch up a little bit before say hello and. Uh, just want to say congratulations to her because she yeah. nailed it. 32, 32 buildings, impressive. Yes, and what's yeah. awesome about this journey is you got the 
expansions of Vegas and Seattle at it, which is so cool. Yep. Yep. Like when, when when she started, those weren't even in, yeah, yeah. in the Didn't category. And now, it. bang, here we go. 32. She's going to be in Salt Lake City next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Salt Lake City yeah, coming up. Yeah. Tonight at Bridgestone in Nashville, the 32 collection is complete. With Bobby as the bookend. Yes. Unbelievable yep. story. Pretty unreal. Huge congrats. Cool. Um, cool. Congrats there. And then this was a blast as always. So yep. can't, can't wait for the next round. Yep. Yeah. Fucking A. Pick a good city. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Stay warm. Thank you as always to Bobby. Gotta love me some inside the NH inside the locker room. Ask an NHLer. Just to I can't we're gonna make that a whole series for you guys. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Inside the locker room is the best. Um let's pop into some armchair GM. Blake, what's the theme? So armchair GM this week. Well we'll we'll recap last week. So Chris, you won again. Come on. Thirty one points to Dan's twenty five. Oh you're bad. pulling away. Uh, so total, Chris, you're at 183. Dan, you're at 174. Uh, so just a reminder for the fans, the listeners, last week's theme was European-born players. This week, the theme is a player who has been traded in the past five years. Love it. Who's up first? Me, because I won. Yeah. You're bro, because he won. Bitch. <laughs> I think that should be the other one. And I think uh, <laughs> just for the spirit <laughs> of, of this one... Um, you can just pick three forwards. They don't need to be center, left wing, right wing. Oh, okay. So okay. Just so you can really. Look we have them written down. If you want to do it right, Dan. Oh, I'm probably gonna do it right, but I might. We'll see. All right, make your pick, bitch. Okay. Um. Is Matt? Is Matt through the chuck hurt? No. He's still in. Okay. You can't pick him now because you asked that question. Seriously, can't be that dumb. The fuck? No, you can pick him. For my first pick, give me. Patrick Kane. No. You made your pick. You made your pick in Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> you just said no to Kachuk and then no to Kaner? You're such a cunt. He's on 11 games. All right, no, go. Shut up. Something. That's my pick. It's fucking bullshit that you get to pick first, too. In a week, then, dude. I did. I won the first one, and then you started cheating. The The uh, record is 4-2 uh, yeah. for Chris. Yeah. Hey, one good week, and you can come Yeah, yeah fucking whatever, dude. Fucking cunt. Um, Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, okay. How, ooh, I can't do that. How like you about... so don't deserve Patrick Kane or a Detroit player ever. Why not? Because you're a fucking douchebag. For my second pick, give me JT Miller. Um, I'll take Jonathan Quick. <clears throat> Damn. Um, okay, for my next pick, I will go, I'm going D, give me Hampus Lindholm. Uh, Jack Eichel. Oh, fuck me, dude. Jack's back. That's awesome. Um... Next, give me Tage Thompson. Brock Faber, loophole, trade acquisitions. That's actually or, such um, a sick move. Oh. Um, I'll allow it. We're, this is how we play armchair GM. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Uh, back to the well. Give me Eric Carlson. I'll take Chikrin. Risky one here, but just for the games, give me Corpus Allo. To brink it. All right, there we have it. Now we're doing saucy predictions. Uh, last week, I doubled down on McDavid. I said he would score five in his next three, and he finally fucking scored, but I think he got that one, so I was way off. What did you pick, Dan? I can't even remember. I picked that the Penguins would be, I think, 3-0. and 3-0. Oh. and oh. oh, yeah. And they lost every game. They, they were 0-3. They were 0-3. They were and you know what? It went exactly <laughs> it went the other way. <laughs> no, no. It went exactly according to plan because what I did there was I reverse jinxed them. Yep. And... You want them out. I... I want chaos. Okay, so we got our predictions wrong. We got to eat. Here we go. Oh, uh, again, I know I say this every episode, but I can smell it from over here. Yep. So, so bad. So bad. So good. So good. <laughs> the chicken's great. I can feel my palm sweating. <coughs> <sighs> While it's building and the hiccups are coming. I will go first. We're doing trade deadline predictions only. Mine are that Frank Petrano will be traded to the New York Rangers and that Jake Gensel will be traded. Ooh. I'm not saying. I think it's a saucy enough one to say that he'll be traded at all. Okay, fair. Mine is that three goalies will be moved this deadline. Before, before end of Friday, three goalies will be on different teams. That was such an aggressive prediction. Yeah, that is so aggressive. <laughs> I think two are definitely moving, so I'm just trying to make sure it's three. Imagine just signing up for death like that. Ugh. Wait, wait, watch, dude. You're going to fucking eat a wing for that. I don't want to get cocky. I'm feeling okay. Really? 
this is awful. <laughs> I'm doing the bomb right now. Your brother and like a puke in his fucking lap. Oh uh, man, it's like it's hot, but I'm feeling okay. Like, I think maybe I'm getting better. So, you, do I need to bring in a hotter sauce next? Yeah. Week? No, no. I For think him. I think maybe that I feel hot. Like I feel sweat. I'm sweaty, but I think I'm all right. Maybe I got a sauce more next time. Maybe. But I am feeling it. Okay, that's it for us this week. Can't wait to enjoy the trade deadline with you guys. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be all over Twitter. We're going to be all over IG. Craziness. We will follow along with everything. I can't even speak anymore. And um, until then. Sauce hard. I mean, skate hard. Skate hard. (laughs)